Mr Chairman, I can confirm that the live stream has now started. Thank you very much. Good morning to you. My name is Chris Batters. I'm the Chairman of East Planning and welcome to today's virtual meeting of the Sub Area Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I need to outline the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may choose to use their videos. If the Council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I will adjourn for a short period to try to re-establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I will remind you to switch on, switch on your microphone. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise accordingly. Today's vote will be taken by a roll call. The names of the members, the committee members will be called out and they will answer for or against recommendation. And the results will be announced by the Democratic Services Officer. Members must be present for the duration of the discussion on each planning application in order to be able to vote. We have public speakers at today's meeting and they will be joining the meeting via telephone link. Where a member has declared a non-registrable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest, or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they will be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting is that the members of the committee who wish to speak on any items should indicate by using the raise your hand icon on the screen. Um, the function will be monitored by Vice Chair Councillor Adrian Parsons and members of the committee. That will be the only way that you will indicate you wish to speak. Um, we now move into the meeting itself. That's the end of the announcements. Before we start, I will ask the Democratic Services Officer Angela to ask the committee members to confirm they are present and to state their electoral role. So thank you very much. Across to you, Angela. Thank you. Um, I'll start with you since as you're live. Yeah, um, Chris Batters, Cornwall Councillor for the Nivet Blislin Division. Thank you. Councillor Parsons. Good morning, uh, Councillor Adrian Parsons representing the Elton Nun Division. Thank you. Councillor Burden. Uh, Neil Burden, um, Stuckland's and Division. Councillor Craker. Hello, Councillor Nick Craker, Cornwall Councillor for Liscard North Division. Councillor Eddy. Good morning, Martin Eddy representing the St Clair Division. Councillor Fitter. Good morning, John Fitter, Colin and St Morgan. Councillor Flashman. Jim Flashman representing St Dominic, St Millen and Kelly Bray Division. Councillor Holly. Good morning, Derek Holly, Saltash East Division. Councillor Jordan. Barry Jordan, Tintagel Division. Councillor Simmons. Yes, good morning, John Simmons representing Myler East, uh, Penryn East and Myler. Councillor Mould. Mm. Carol Mould, I'm the Cornwall Councillor for the St Member and St Indelian Division. Councillor Pascoe. Good morning, Councillor Jane Pascoe representing Liscard West and of Wolf. Councillor Pugh. Good morning, I'm Richard Pugh, I'm the Cornwall Councillor for the Trelawney Division. Councillor Tamlin. Good morning, Sam Tamlin, Cornwall Councillor for Saltash West. Thank you. That's the members of the committee. I'll just outline which officers are present. We have Vanessa George from Legal, Gavin Smith, Davina Pritchard, Amy Williams, Samuel Fuller and George Shirley from the Planning Department. Um, and there's myself, Angela Saunders from Democratic Services and Steve Charles is producing. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Angela. Um, in that case, then we move on to the agenda. So can I please ask for the apologies, any apologies. 
Yeah, we've had apologies from Councillor May, who's being substituted by Councillor Simmons today, and we've also had apologies from Councillor Long. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to also indicate that um, should we go on beyond half past one, I will have to depart at quarter at 20 to two for an appointment. Um, so hopefully we may be finished by then. Um, otherwise, we'll move on to item two, which is declaration of interest, please. Any declarations of interest? It's, n it's not an interest, Mr Chairman, Neil Burton here, but it is to say that uh, I've got an appointment before one, so I shall have to leave after item three or something like that. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. So uh, no no uh, notifications uh, of a... I have to declare that uh, on item 4.4, <clears throat> uh, the land close to the application belongs to my wife, and although I will be speaking, I will not be voting on that application. Thank you, Jim. You recorded that, yes. Angela, have you? Oh, yes. All recorded. Thank you. Um, in that case, moving on to item three, uh, the minutes of the previous meeting. Can we have a proposer and seconder for them being an accurate record, please? Proposer, Chairman Jim Flashman. Proposed Jim Flashman. I'll second, second it, Jim. Barry Jordan, second Councillor Jordan. Can we have a roll call, please, with regards to their accuracy? Yes, Chairman. Councillor Burden. Support. Councillor Craker. Abstain, I wasn't there. Councillor Eddy. Four. Councillor Fitter. Four. Councillor Flashman. Four. Councillor Holly. Four. Councillor Jordan. Four. Councillor Simmons. Uh, abstain as I wasn't present. Councillor Mould. Four. Councillor Pasco. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. Councillor Tamlin. Four. Councillor Parsons. Four. Yeah, Chair, and I can confirm that the minutes have been carried. Yeah, I would add my four to that as well. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. That's okay, no problem. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Uh, that was obviously carried and we enter now onto the full agenda with the first application being PA 20-09486. At this point, I will hand over to my vice chairman, Councillor Parsons, to uh, to conduct this application as it is in my division and I will be speaking on it very shortly. Cross to you, vice chair. Thank you, chairman. Uh, hello, members. Uh, as the chairman's outlined, this is First item, PA20-09486, land at Little Downs, Pool Lane, Cardin and Bodmin. This is an application for permission in principle for the construction of up to two dwellings. Um, could I call on the planning officer to outline the application, please? Good morning, Councillor Parsons. Thank you. Amy Williams here. Uh, just morning. I'll just share my screen for you. Sorry, it's got lost amongst all the different things. Um, sorry about this. It's not on my screen and it was when we did the test. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Apologies. That's OK. If you can just confirm when it's there on the screen for me, please. It's there. Yep. So item 4.1, as Councillor Parsons suggested, is an application for permission in principle for the construction of up to two dwellings. The key issue with a permission in principle is the principle of residential development on the land. This first um, slide shows you the location of the site in question, highlighted in red, and its association with the area known as Little Downs. And again, just a more detailed site plan that shows the context of the application site and then an aerial imagery for your reference. 
These are some photos of the application site taken recently. These two are of the site itself. This shows the access point, which is this one here, which sits alongside some access points for neighbouring dwellings. And these are just some um, example or some photographs of the area of Little Downs taken from various viewpoints. When we come to look at the balance of considerations on this application, the application seeks permission in principle to develop the area of land for up to two dwellings. The proposal qualifies as infill or rounding off development within a settlement in accordance with policy three of the Cornwall Local Plan. The proposal will introduce up to two dwellings onto a vacant site. However, any, any harm resulting from this is, is considered to be minor as the new homes would be seen in association with the built form of the adjoining settlement. Furthermore, the design of any new homes, including scale, appearance and landscaping, would need to be carefully considered at the technical detail stage, which would follow any approval of a permission in principle. Taking these factors into account, the benefits of the scheme outweigh any negatives and accordingly, it is recommended that the permission in principle is granted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. If we could now move on for to our first uh, speaker, please, Mrs. I don't know, do we have Mrs. Alison Goodman on the line? Yeah, she's just arrived at the meeting, Chairman. Thank you, Angela. Hello, is that Mrs. Goodman? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just hand you over to the chairman. Hello, Mrs. Goodman, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello, uh, welcome to the meeting. Uh, Mrs. Goodman, you just to remind you, you have three minutes and to speak. And when you get within 30 seconds of the end, you'll have a warning. OK, um, so I'll pass over to you. Thank you. OK, that's fine. Um, we're having to do it on the phone. I haven't got anything on the computer, but anyway, um, my twin sister and I have lived next door to the land in question for 12 years with two long boundaries of hedgerow bordering our land. Numerous planning applications have been refused since the 1980s at that time with North Cornwall District Council and since then with Cornwall County Council. During our time here, refusals, appeals and enforcements have not been complied with, including the removal of a mobile home. In August 2014, there was an application, PA 1405033, made by Mr Dave Checkley for the construction of two eco bungalows. The officer's report gives many details of other refusals, appears in enforcement cases, EM 13-02359, and there is a notice of refusal of planning permission there. The enforcement case has never been complied with, and now this particular permission in principle appears to be allowing development in the field. We and our neighbours of Little Downs would like to know, you know what, what details have changed, because nothing's changed up here. Bearing in mind that the properties surfing this site are all bungalows, if, as it looks, this application for permission in principle is likely to be approved, can I have placed on record that speaking for myself and the other residents of Little Downs, we would ask that if and when the application appears in the future to develop these two dwellings, can we have recorded that residents of Little Downs would ask that consideration be given to the maximum of the two dwellings being bungalows? Two houses in that field will overlook all of the other bungalows, whereas two bungalows would hopefully blend in with the existing properties and improve the dreadful state of the of the area uh, you know, that, that it has become because no maintenance has been done in there for about three years, which was why the, uh, they had an uh, application to uh, leave the mobile home there so that they could do maintenance but none of that has happened for about three years um that, that's my yeah that's that, that's my bit really okay thank you mrs goodman if you could just hold on for a second um for if there are any questions of clarification from any members please i don't know if any members have any questions councillor batters come in yes thank you thank you chair 
Um, Alison, um, can you confirm that there have been no additional properties added immediately adjoining the field in all the period that you have lived there and since the commencement of these applications some considerable years ago? N nothing in nothing in this sort of triangle, no. No, so therefore it's exactly as it was all the times it's been refused. Yeah, the caravan be. Yes, yeah. Thank you, that's fine. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Partners. Do we have any other members who wish to ask a question? Um, no, that looks like it. That's it. Thank you, Mrs. Good. Oh, sorry. Is, is there another hand? Right. Councillor Mo. Yeah, sorry, Adrian. I was a no, bit late. That's fine. Carol, um, hello, away. Mrs. Goodman. Hello. Um, I just wanted to confirm. So, if this was granted, and then. Um, are you saying that in principle you you would agree to having two bungalows on this site, but but your concern is that you wouldn't want to see anything more than a bungalow, or would you prefer that there was nothing there at all? I, I'm just a bit confused as to as to as to if you're prepared to see nothing there, you think nothing should be there, or you're prepared to see two bungalows there. Well. If, if you could see the mess that it is um, and the mobile home that hasn't been removed and there was an enforcement order to get that moved, um, it, well, it, it would look better to, that there was just one bungalow in there just tidying up the area because it's a, a nice little hamlet or whatever settlement, whatever Little Downs has now come to, to be called. But... Um, if nothing's going in there and the and the and the field was tidied up, that be that would be fine. Um, but otherwise, if we have to um, have some buildings in there, just it, they must be bungalows. Um, you know, and, and, and a maximum of two. Okay, okay, that's lovely. That's very clear. Thank you very much. Thank you. So okay, Carol. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. Right, thank you, Mr. Goodman. I think there are no other questions, so thank you for your time. Um, you can, I think, you could watch the meeting live on webcast if you so wish. All right, thank you. Um, thank you very much. If we could then move on to our next speaker, please, which is Jules Best from Cardinham Parish Council. Do, do we have... Are they there, Angela, please? Um, yes, uh, she is, but I had to mute her as there is some background noise. So, uh, Councillor Best, if you can hear me, you need to press star six on your telephone keypad to unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, we can hear you now. Thank you. Hello, Councillor Best. Good morning. Hello. Thank you for Welcome. inviting me to join the meeting. That's fine. Welcome to the meeting. You have three minutes to outline um, your considerations to the parish, uh, to the council, and um, you'll have a 30 second warning near the end. OK, thank you. Thank you. OK, Cardinal Parish Council, we're representing the concerns of our parishioners. And in this case, there's been a lot of concerns of this development over many years. In actual fact, we found information going back as far as 1976 when a planning application was put in for this uh, uh, development area. Applications have continued to be raised over the years since. I have a whole list of dates and at each time every one of them has been refused. Um, sometimes it's actually gone to appeal and when it's gone to appeal, it has also been refused. Um, was a gentleman lived there and he originally, he was told that he could stay until his death and then the site would have to be cleared. Um, the last time this planning application went through in, um, this was only a few years ago and it was turned down by the planning officer, um, the same planning officer who's actually working on the case at present. As far as we're aware, there's still an enforcement notice outstanding on this site. Um, that was requiring the removal of the caravans and associated infrastructure. The site was supposed to have been returned to its original condition, i.e. pasture land. Parish Council believes that if Cornwall Council had followed this through 
and the land was returned to its original state, then the application for dwellings would not even been considered for this site. Um, that covers policy seven, which is dwellings in the open countryside. Now we find an application has been submitted yet again for planning in principle on this site. Neighbours and parishioners, it's not just the um, neighbours at Little Downs, other parishioners have spoken to the parish council regarding this. We're struggling to, they're struggling to understand how every application to develop the site over more than 30 years have been refused on every occasion, with strong reason for refusal given by your own planning officers and the inspector. Yet again today, we find this site is being recommended by plan your planning office as being suitable for planning in principle been granted for the building of the two dwellings. Codrum and Parish Council are the same frame of mind as they've always been on this site that is unsuitable for development and we remain opposed to any form of development taking place. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Best. Uh, do we have any questions of yeah. clarification? Councillor Pascal. Councillor Pascal, would good. you like to come in? Yes, certainly. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, good, good morning, Councillor Best. Um, morning. If I may, Chair, I, I have two very quick questions, if that's OK. First of all, can you tell me, was it an unanimous decision by the Parish Council to refuse yes, this? Yes, it was. Yes, yes, uh, it was. Yes. Each time, unanimous. It was unanimous. Each time. And the, the second question is, the, the site appears on the plans to be a, 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 a hex, uh, sorry, a pentagon shape, and it appears yeah. that there may be buildings, um, houses and residences on three sides of that. Um, why would you, have you come to the conclusion it would not be infill or rounding off? Are you able to tell me how the council came to that uh, conclusion? Because we've always been led to believe that was the reason um, when the first application was put in, obviously all those years ago, um, obviously I wasn't on the council then, but at, at, after each time it's been refused, Paris Council felt the same. And also because the area of the site, um, if planning is given, like they say, for two dwellings in principle, the site is actually big enough for several more dwellings. Um, it's not just that particular site. There's other areas where you've got a spot, space, you know, two houses with gaps in between. You know, it's, it can be over development. There's no facilities at Little Downs. It's just a, a straggle of bungalows. Um, this is why Parish Council has turned it down and, like I said, unanimously have turned it down each time. And North Cornwall District Council, Cornwall Council, or previously Cornwall County Council, and the planning inspectorate has always turned it down and we have always felt exactly the same, which is a unanimous decision each time by Codden and Parish Council. Thank you very much. OK, Joe. I've got two questions. Um, right, um, Councillor Flash, come in, Jim. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Jim Flashman here. Um, is the ownership of the land and in uh, ownership of the same person all the time? Um, the person that owned it originally, I believe, was related to the person that's got the land now. Okay. And and has the uh, has the parish got a development plan that's valid at the moment? No, the Cousin Parish Council has not got a development plan, no. Okay, that's, that's one of two questions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Holly, I see your hands raised. Would you like to come in? Thank, thank you, Mr Chairman, Mr Substitute Chairman. Um, can I ask you, Madam Councillor, was the fact that um, the application is now being judged under the new Cornwall Council local plan explained by the parish clerk to you and the policy fear of that and not under the North Cornwall Council plans. Yes, yes, yes. We've gone through all these policies Which were different. as well. Pardon? Okay. Which, because they were different. Okay. 
It has yes. been explained. Thank you. Yes, Thank it you has, yes. Okay. And Councillor Fitter, I see yours is the last hand currently raised if you'd like to come in. With Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, Councillor Beth, um, can I just, is it the feeling of the parish council, and presumably it has been since these applications have come in, that you regard this area of land as open space and add in a sort of a bit of um, quality and um, space to the village? And is it, you, you know, the principle of why you don't want it developed is because you regard it as strictly pasture land and open space. But to start with, it's not a village. It is just a small straggle of houses. So it's, it's not a village. Like I say, there is no amenities at all. Um, it's just about a mile and a half from Cordillon Village, um, which in itself is quite a small village. But Little Downs is just like a straggle of houses. Um, it's not open land. It is just a, it's just a little field, to be honest. Um, and if the enforcement had been carried forward, it would have been put back to pasture land, which is what was stated on each time the, um, it's been turned down. It was supposed to be, the land was supposed to be cleared, the caravans removed, and the, um, I think it was like a small wooden type building there. Um, it was, should have been put back to pasture land. Yeah, I, I, what I was struggling to understand yes. is, is the, 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 the principle of the objection. Is it because you wish it to remain as pasture land within this hamlet then? Um, yes, or yes. I, feel, I feel this is what also is not just the parish council, the residents, um, majority, well, all of the residents, to be honest, um, I haven't seen any resident has actually supported this planning application. Um, the majority of them did put their objections onto Cornwall Council on the planning site, and um, several of them have obviously spoken to the parish council regarding, you know, they, they didn't want any development on this site. Right. Okay. So it's not that you're against anti-development; it's just this particular um, field meadow in this settlement is not appropriate. Exactly, for and all, that's exactly it. And also, we feel that if there's development. Um, but there, because of develop, um, because of the wording is planning in principle, it's not like a planning for a bungalow. It right. is a development in principle, and we feel that if planning in principle is given on that small space of land, um, you, you would, you know, obviously it, it's a sold to developer, which I don't know, it may not be, but um, a lot more developments could be put there, and it would alter. Um, little downs completely. I, I, thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Bess. You've clarified that for me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Best. I think that's all questions asked. Um, thank you for your clarity. And you may now leave and um, if you wish, watch the meeting at your pleasure okay. on the webcast. Right. Thank you ever so much. Okay. Thank you very oh, much for hearing thank me. You. Thank you. If we could. Angela, do we have our next speaker, uh, Sarah Jane Williams, available, please? Yes, yes, yeah. C can you hear me? Hello, is that Mrs. Williams? Yes, it is speaking. Mrs. Williams, welcome to today's meeting. Um, it, you have three minutes to which you'll be given a 30 second warning near the end. Um, if you'd like to carry on, please. Thank you. There have been a number of objections to this application on the basis of the planning history of this site relating to old unsuccessful applications and appeal and historic enforcement actions. I wish to reiterate the planning officer's report that confirms there are no outstanding enforcement issues on this site. Any previous planning decisions were based upon the previous outdated local development plan. Since then, there has been a significant change in local planning policy, and this application must be determined in accordance with the current and up-to-date local plan and any other material considerations. I wish to make it clear that this application is for the first stage of permission in principle, and the scope is limited to the use of the land, location and amount of development only. And the proposal is only for up to two dwellings. I think I need to make that clear. Any objections on the basis that there is a lack of detail and an absence of technical details, such as the scale, design, character, etc., are relevant for this stage of the PIP process. 
as such, those comments should not be taken into consideration as part of the decision-making process at this stage. The application site falls outside of the main town as defined in the Cornwall local plan, and thus new development falls to be judged under policy three. Such development can be met by way of rounding off or infill. In terms of rounding off, the site directly about six of the 11 or so dwellings within Little Downs, and these are spread along three of the site's five boundaries, with one of the other boundaries being the highway, rendering it substantially enclosed as required by the policy. It also complies with the Chief Planning Officer's advice note on rounding off and infill itself, another material consideration, which states that suitable sites are likely to be surrounded on at least two sides by existing developments. Infill, meanwhile, is defined as filling of a small gap in an otherwise continuously built up frontage that does not physically extend the settlement into the open countryside. Policy 3 is clear that infill will only be supported where the settlement in question has a form and shape and clearly definable boundaries, not just a low-density straggle of dwellings. Little Downs does have a shape and form. It forms nucleated settlements clustered around the road junction and the two triangles of common land between the roads. From this core, the settlement extends slightly eastward along both of the roads. The Chief Planning Officer's note states that a settlement is a place where people collectively live in permanent dwellings, well to find groups of dwellings with a collective name will normally be settlements, and that in defining settlements there are no ex expectations of certain. 80 seconds settlements. left. Um, the site is in close proximity to Cardin and Bodmin, which have such facilities. On a reasonable consideration of the shape, layout, and form of Little Downs, the application site falls clearly within the settlement and is not um, extension into the open countryside. The proposal is therefore in accordance with the development plan and is supported by the Chief Planning Officer's advice note which is a material consideration, permission in principle should be granted. Uh, as a wider consideration, there is no realistic long-term... That's three time. minutes, Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs Williams. Sorry, I have to stop you there. No, um, that's fine. <laughs> I'm going as much as I could. <laughs> that's OK. Do we have any questions from members for Mrs Williams? I see Councillor Batter's hand is raised. Councillor Batter's <laughs> come in, please. I could ask one, please. Yes. Okay. Far away, Chris. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Good morning, Sarah Jane. Good morning. Um, I noticed you used the word settlement. Probably, I counted nine. It might have been ten times. Um, where do you find the definition of a settlement, please? Um, so the um, definition um, I'm using um, as, as it's contained within the Chief Planning Officer's advice note, which which is talking about. Um, you know what what is um, uh, you know in, in terms of infill and and what is deemed to be the settlement in, in that context. So if you look at the chief planning officer's notes, that there's a lot of detail on that. But no definition as such, is there? And uh, no. No, exactly. Oh, um, I, I, thank I, you. I, 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 sorry, other than he, he is saying things like a settlement is a place where people collect. Yeah, live I think, but there isn't actually collect. a definition. That's what I was asking about. Yeah. Um, if I can continue on the other um, the other thing is you you mentioned the fact that you were looking to put two dwellings in there. Well, should this committee decide to approve it, the the residents in that area um, are all concerned that the fact may be you end up with houses in that field and they are surrounded by bungalows which of course wouldn't be very comfortable. It would be able to keep him with the, the, the locality. So might it be such that you might be happy to just have bungalows in there? Of, of course, obviously I'd have to take um, the applicant's instructions, but obviously this is the first stage of the permission in principle process. So we have to go through stage two, which is also the technical detail yeah. stage, which is where they would have to provide plans um, and details of, of what they intend. And obviously, if it was something, um, you know, th 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 that, that process still has to go to a decision. So they, they'll have to obviously take on board everything that they're hearing today. Um, and they'll have to provide plans for um, another made on the, on the second stage. And also planning conditions can be attached to the second stage. I think that's outlined it, Mrs Williams. Do you have any other... But thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Flashman, would you like to yeah, come thank in? Thank you, Mrs Williams. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, is the description of this uh, small cluster of houses a hamlet? Um, most of the hamlets are registered, actually. 
could you answer that one, please? Um, I, I think it's more more than a, a, a Hamlet. Um, it, it's it, as, as I was saying, I've been looking mainly at um, the chief planning officer's note, which which gives details of. Um, you know, trying to define settlement. I mean, that is that is one of the issues that someone brought up in the question a moment ago. And the purpose of that note is to assist in certain circumstances such as this, and it is a material consideration. Um, and one of the things it says is that it's a place where people collectively live in permanent buildings. Or, yes. Um, I think that's fine, Mrs. Place. Williams. Sorry Thank to come you. in. I yeah. think any no, clarification. No, no, no. Another any clarification question. can come from the case officer on that if required anyway. Do you have any other questions, yeah, Councillor Fashman? One, one more question. Roughly what size is the plot? Um, I have no internet at the moment, so I'm relying on the plan that's in the plan and schedule. Um, would it be half an acre, quarter of an acre? Oh, I'd have to... Um, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd have to... Uh, I, I'm trying to find um, online because like, they did have that. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, That's okay. Sorry. It's probably sorry. another one the case officer could clarify okay. when the and time I also, was. It should be on the application form, um, yeah. which I'm sorry, I'm trying to bring up the document and my computer's not loading. <laughs> unfortunately. That's okay. If Amy's listening. I also need to ask a legal question at the end, please, Adrian. That's fine, Councillor Flashman. That's fine. Thanks. Councillor Fitter, I see your hands raised. Would you like to? Yeah, just just a quick one with your kind permission, Mr. Chairman. Does the lady know the grade of the land, given that everyone seems to be referring to it as an agricultural land? Um, I don't believe it is um, agricultural land. Um, and obviously, there's been a lot of discussion about the previous history of the site. Um, so I don't believe it is. But I'll have to check that. All right. Uh, thank you. I'll pass on. I'll ask the, I'll ask the planning officer, Mr. Chairman. I think thank that's you. another one we can ask the planning officer, Councillor Fitter, if you're OK with that. Certainly, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Mrs. Williams, thank you. I think. That's all the questions. It, Thanks for your it, time. Is um, the meeting now showing live? Because I, I wasn't able to see anything before and I expect the gentleman that dialed me in. Um, but up until I was called in, the live feed wasn't available or, or certainly I've been sent the wrong link from the... Um, right, as far as I'm aware, if you were to go onto the Cornwall Council website, it should be being webcast live under the East Planning Subcommittee. Yes. It sounds like it's done a crack service. So there are two links, and you need to watch the one that says from 10 a.m. onwards. Excellent. I've just been sent um, from Steve Charles that's here since I've been speaking. He sent me the updated link. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Okay, thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye now. Thank you. Uh, finally, we have divisional member Councillor Batters. Councillor Batters, you have five minutes, please, to which in that time we'll hopefully you'll be able to wind it all up. Well, surprising for me, Chair, it probably won't take me five minutes, but I will go through it. Um, thank you very much. Um, today's application is classed as a PIP, Permission in Principle, as we well know, which is an unusual title, is something we're not generally facing. But the reality is it's no different to outline planning permission. And my reason for calling it here today is for transparency, transparency for the residents of Little Down. This application site has appeared many times seeking approval to build, and it's sought approval to build under two separate titles many times. One is the land at Little Downs, Pool Lane, and the other one is the caravan Little Downs. So each has had numerous applications. The planning applications have appeared regularly on this land since 1976. Here, for instance, is a file of all the application paperwork that's gone into this. Um, and all those applications have been refused by Cornwall Council Planning Department, and even when taken to appeal, have been refused by the appeal inspector. Enforcement orders have been issued against the caravan, the removal of the caravan on the land, but again, it's been ignored and again taken to appeal. But the one saving grace 
for those living at Little Downs was the fact that every application since the original one in 1976, right up to and including 2018, were refused and there was no likelihood of the land being developed. Let me read you the comments of the appeal inspector only a couple of years ago. And her exact words on the record are, overall, due to their number and layout, these dwellings form a small grouping in the countryside rather than an established settlement as such. And thus, for planning purposes, the appeal site is in the countryside. I repeat, the appeal site is in the countryside. They clearly state this is not a settlement and nothing physically has changed on that site since that report. This immediate area of Little Downs has not seen any recent development. Yet today, those same residents are being told to understand that suddenly overnight, without any changes, that their grouping of properties is considered a settlement. All of us here today on the committee, all the years we've sat on it, many a time have we had to decide what constitutes a settlement. And I ask the committee to consider this application very carefully. Even the former head of planning, I won't mention the gentleman's name, but you're all aware of who our former head of planning was, appears in that black file I showed you stating that this is not a site for development. We know only too well what importance we as planning members place on what is a settlement and what is not. But the appeal inspector has insisted that this one and has insisted with this one and informed us that this is this site is not considered a settlement. I therefore ask you again to refuse this application and if necessary, if necessary, let it once again go to appeal and let's see what the planning inspector says on this occasion, because truthfully, He's, the planning inspector stated it was not a settlement and nothing has changed. So in my opinion, this application should be refused on the grounds that a planning inspector only a couple of years ago determined it was not a settlement. So there's been no further growth, nothing's changed. So I leave that with yourselves. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Butters. If you could just hold on a second, because I see Councillor Eddy has raised his hand. I'm not sure if it's a question of clarification from you or for the case officer. And Martin, who's your question for, please? Chairman, if I if I a question to Chris, really, Chairman, I, I'm looking yeah, at the chief coming. planning officers. Thank you, Chairman. Please, the chief planning officers advice note, and it says local people uh, can assist with making a judgment as to whether a place is considered a settlement or not. Uh, it also says we could ask the parish. Uh, in, 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 to your knowledge, Chris, do, do the people who live there consider it a settlement or do they consider it a straggle of houses? I think most definitely a straggle of houses, Martin. Um, it, is, it is not a settlement. No one would class it as a settlement, actually. But the bottom line is that the as you approach it, you, you have to walk a fair distance between all the different properties. You know, I should be out there shortly walking around, as you expect. But really and truly, this is not dissimilar to the one that we had for you, Chair, um, where it was considered it wasn't infill because the field was too far spaced from adjoining properties. I will come to that in a moment with a planning officer. But no, I would not consider Little Downs to be a settlement. It is uh, several houses spread well out, Martin. Thanks. But yeah, I think you've given a good... Yeah. Indicating you. of your feeling. Anything else, Councillor Eddy? Any other questions? No, that's fine. Thank you, Chairman. Right. Thank you, Chris. Councillor Holly, your hand is raised. Do you have a yeah. question? Thank you, Mr. Thank, Chairman. You. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can I ask you how many houses there are in the settlement or whatever? Offhand, the immediate proximity to that to particular site we're talking about, there's probably six spaced out probably six there. If you go further down the road, there's a few more 
going on. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's a is it's a spasmodic development over the years. But in that immediate area, I might be wrong, but the, I know there's as you stand at the gate, there's two to the left, there's two running up that side, um, and there's probably, to be honest, I think roughly about six spread right. out around. And it, it's would a, it surprise you, Chris, that I've counted twenty on the map just now, within about two or three hundred yards. Well, we'll come to that with the planning yeah. inspector in a minute, yeah. but I don't think there's that many that close. Okay, well, yeah, thank, thank you, James. I think we'll discuss that later on in the debate. Okay, I think we have no more questions of clarification. So, in that case, thank you, Councillor Batters. We'll move on to members' questions of the case officer. If you're there, Amy, I think there are going to be some questions. Yes, I'm here and I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Um, firstly, I'll ask a question myself. Could we just, Amy, have some clarification regarding? whether this is in your um, consideration a defined settlement or if you do consider it to be a straggle of properties obviously I, i'm assuming you think it's a defined settlement yeah um if you refer back to my report um i detail the reasons why we consider this to be a settlement um to address i think probably one of the main concerns that's been raised by the parish council and um, councillor batters uh, and briefly by the uh, objectors, is this kind of debate about the fact it was previously refused because it was the open countryside and now is being recommended for approval because it's in a settlement. Um, the biggest shift and the difference um, in the assessment with this application is the adoption of the Cornwall Local Plan. Uh, the adoption of the Cornwall Local Plan has set out uh, what a settlement is defined as um, and that is reiterated in the Chief Planning Officer advice note uh, and that is very different to what uh, would have constituted settlements uh, in the past you know with the old North Cornwall local plan it, it was very black and white you had a development boundary if you were within it you're fine if you were without of it it was the open countryside. That's not the approach taken by the Cornwall Local Plan as it stands at the moment. Uh, you know, settlements don't have to be big settlements with services and facilities in them. They they can be small settlements where there are clearly definable boundaries. Um, and Little Downs, in our in my opinion, in in an officer's opinion, um, does now constitute as a settlement. It's part of a network of other. Um, a wider settlement uh, network, which then does offer the services and facilities needed. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's if you refer back to my officer report, um, but that's basically why the recommendation is now an approval, which is significantly obviously different to lots of the past uh, decisions that have been made. Right, thank you. And can I also ask if if members were minded to support this application, would we have any power in ways of conditioning scale oh, scale sorry about that scale and landscaping with regards to perhaps keeping bungalows on that site rather than houses um, to appease some of the concerns of the uh, local residents yeah i mean i, I understand um, the concern about scale i don't think it's something we can necessarily condition I mean, we can we could possibly put on like an advisory note on a decision notice to say that the the local plant planning authority would be mindful that bungalows are maybe a better form of development but it is the technical detail stage which would um, follow on from this permission in principle that would contain all of that information anyway so a bit like Councillor Batters was saying, a permission in principle is a bit of a new thing, but we do look at it almost like an outline. You know, you are just looking at the principle at this stage. Then when the technical detail stage comes in, we will have all that information together. If for any reason the um, applicant decided to go against the kind of thoughts of, of a single story and they went for two story, it would obviously be, be assessed at that point. Um, and it may well be refused at that point, but we can't predict what they're going to do. Um, but we, we may well be able to put some kind of advice note on, but I, I don't think we can actually condition it as part of the permission in principle. OK, thank you, Amy. Uh, Councillor Batters, I see your hand is raised. If you have a question for the case officer, please. Uh, yes. 
Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, Amy. Morning. Um, I know we've discussed these um, matters before, but I want transparency for the residents who will be watching today should this decision go against their opinions. A um, couple of things really. So what you're saying is that something that's classed as not being a settlement um, prior to um, the Cornwall local plan suddenly becomes a settlement um, in certain cases, which I find surprising because nothing's changed. So can you first of all explain to me why um, nothing has changed yet a new ruling comes in with a Cornwall local plan and suddenly this settlement becomes accessible or acceptable. Can you firstly out outline the reasoning behind that? I know you just said it but to me the change of law does not necessarily mean to say that there's a change of policy on a certain site surely. Well the, the site itself may not have changed, but as I said, the biggest change is the way in which policy has been written, adopted and is being implemented. Um, and in the old North Cornwall local plan days, um, as I said, it, it was a very black and white system. You know, there was development boundaries were drawn around your main towns and villages, and, and that was what was classed as being suitable for development. The approach that the Cornwall Local Plan is taking and the Chief Planning Officer Knight, you know, is different. Um, and it's allowing for development to take place in areas that may well have not been classed as settlements. Um, but if it's if it's kind of concluded that a, a, an area now does meet the definition of a settlement, um, then it's then allowing development to take place. So although the site itself hasn't changed, there has been a significant shift in how we are approaching where development should be taking place. Yeah. I, I think um, we keep referring to North Cornwall District Council, but of course we also have been, there's been several applications under the MPPF in that, in that short period of time. But the other few questions I've got is, um, secondly, um, I don't wish to be cheeky, but surely this was one of the quickest presentations ever. A couple of photographs of the road, but we didn't have any Google aerial Google Earth shots of the plot itself, if I remember, um, which might have been helpful to be able to see the size of the plot and where it is. Um, was there any reason? Is that because it's a PIP? No, no, there was the standard, there was the standard um, maps and the aerial imagery was on the presentation. Right, I can okay. bring that back I up if you'd like to see it. Yeah, the Google, the Google Earth one, if we could just. Yeah, just bear with me just a second. Thank you. Yeah, no, looking at that one, um, yes, there's 20 odd properties around there, but I've seen I've seen sites with more properties in that, or, you know, with properties of that similar thing. That that to me is not a settlement because where that where that actual site is, you've got one bungalow to the right of it, which is pen over and three on the left of it and one at the end of it and the adjoining field next this to is it. This a question, the, Chairman, is it? Yeah, yeah, what I'm coming to, the one to the right, had an application refused. Now, do you honestly call that a settlement ar immediately around that site? I can, yeah, we can, officers consider that the the area of Little Downs as a whole area is, is a settlement, yes. Fine, okay. Um, and what what is the distance, please, between you know, the, the nearest properties? Uh, you'll have to give me a bit of time to measure that on my mapping system, if you just bear with me. I'm only judging this on previous um, sites like this, which have uh, been considered infill, when it's considered they're too far apart from other properties, that was all. I'll make that my last question for the moment, Chair. And it's, uh, Thank you. But, um, are you happy for me to stop sharing that screen a second? Um, yeah, by all means, yeah, certainly, Amy, whatever it speeds it up, yeah. Yeah. Chairman, it's um, Councillor Craig here. On a point of order, can I just um, ask that I, I think the planning officer has made it clear that it's her view that this is a settlement, and I, I just think we're going round in circles a bit, and I'd like to move on. Point taken, Councillor Craig. I think, I think, Councillor Holly, can, would you like to come in with a question? Can we keep this brief because we do now appear to be going round houses a little bit? Um, Councillor Holly, come in. Yeah, thank you, Mr. 
I just wanted to confirm the uh, whether the planning officer could confirm. I've just recounted in that this the number of houses in this group is, I think, is about 22 within about three or 400 metres of a sort of radius. I just cannot understand um, where it's coming from. So the planning officer, could you just say, do you consider the number of houses important in defining a settlement? Um, yeah, I mean, the number of houses does obviously play um, a significant part of whether it's a settlement or not. Um, I can I can show you, uh, I can bring up a different map if you'd like me to, that just kind of shows the houses no, in, in context. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've covered this area quite thoroughly so far. Um, unless Councillor Fitter, can we bring you in, please? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, uh, I don't know if that is it, but can I ask the question of the planning officer, sir? Is, yeah, I, I, don't know if um, yeah, yeah. I just wonder if the planning officer could, could help me. Is she able to confirm or, or not, or, or not, it may be not, has there been any development in this locality then, let's call it, leave the word beginning with S out of it, has there been any development in this locality in, let's say, the last 20 years? And the next, the other question is, given that at the moment um, this is an undeveloped paddock field, whatever it is, um, do we have the grade of the land? Thank you, sir. Yeah, so I did look up the grade um, whilst um, you were discussing previously. Uh, the, the mapping system that I have shows it as grade three agricultural land. Um, and I know the question was asked about how big the land was as well. So I, I calculated that and it comes up as um, 1.23 acres, 0.5 hectares, just for your information. Um, in terms of the history of the area of Litter Downs, again, you'll just have to bear with me. Obviously, I looked at this uh, a few months ago, so I don't want to give you any inf incorrect information. So I'm just going to quickly run um, another history search for the area. Um, but if you've got any other questions that anyone else wants to kind of ask while I'm doing that. Mr Chairman, I, I through you, sir, I, I, I don't know if, if the planning officer is able to establish, she says it's grade three. It's obviously quite important whether it's grade 3A or 3B. And I just wondered if she had that clarification. If she doesn't, then we you like, um, Chairman, it's Gavin Smith. While, while Amy's looking at that, I'll help, I'll jump in there. We we are on that one, Council Fitter. Um, with that, it's grade three land on our survey. So for the, what, what we've done in the past, and we've taken the precautionary approach. So in the absence of a bespoke survey, I'd suggest that we conclude it's 3A, because it could either be 3A or 3B, but we don't know. So in the absence of that survey, I'd suggest to you that we conclude it's 3A, which is best and most versatile agricultural land. Just on another point to clarify, it seems that we are discussing the, the definition of a settlement and rightly so for this planning application. I just want to set out to you what the definition states in our Cornwall Local Plan, our advice note, just to make it very clear. So what the local plan states is that a settlement is something that should have a form and shape and clearly definable boundaries, not just a low straggle of dwellings. The Chief Planning Officer note states that, quote, a settlement is a place where people collectively live in permanent buildings. Well-defined groups of buildings with a collective name will normally be settlements and that in defining settlements, there are no expectations of services or facilities. So just to let you know, that's what that's that's the words and definitions about how we look to define settlements at the moment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Gavin. Um, Amy, have you found the point that you were looking for or do you want? Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, so I've just done a very um, kind of quick uh, history search on the Little Downs area for planning applications um, and that the system should then bring you up any application that's been submitted on land within a certain search criteria. And I've done kind of the whole Little Downs area. Um, it's brought up only 13 planning applications um, and some of them are just for alterations to a house, conversion of a garage, uh, kitchen extension. So there hasn't been any kind of big I think that's fine, Amy. Yeah. I think that's good, thanks. Yeah. Councillor Tamlin, do you have a question for the case? Thank you, Chair. Um, you'll be relieved to know this isn't about um, settlements or not. Uh, I, I think it's just been answered. I was going to ask about um, the status of the field and the use class. Um, I'm assuming it's an agricultural field rather than some sort of um, residential use? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just classed as a, an agricultural field, yes. Okay, thank you. I've got one question again, please. Councillor Flashman, come in, but please, yeah. no settlement yeah, questions. Very quick. 
Um, bearing in mind how long ago the field had put in its first application and enforcement was issued on the caravan, has any agricultural um, activity been on that field since that first application was put in? Um, I can't speak for kind of how the land has been used um, since 1976 until the present day. Um, what I can say is that um, I did deal with the planning application back in 2014 um, and at that time when I did my site visit um, it was clearly a, an overgrown kind of area that had the mobile home on it. Um, right. That's still the case today and I think the uh, the neighbours in their presentation kind of commented on the fact it had just been kind of left as yeah just a piece of land that wasn't really being used for any, any specific purpose. Okay. okay thank you very much thank you. Thank you Amy. Councillor Mole. Yeah, thank think, you, Chairman. Uh, um, I think this is. I think this may have already been answered, but I just wanted to check. Amy, um, is are there any outstanding enforcement notices on this land? So, um, before when I first got this planning application, given that I did deal with it in 2014, I knew that that it was going to be, uh, you know, quite a controversial one, if you like. Um, I did have a good discussion with um, David Tapsell, who worked in the planning investigation team. The update that he gave me at that time um, was that there was no current enforcement issue on that land. He had prepared and got himself pretty much to court um, with a council solicitor to um, try and get that caravan moved. Uh, and uh, in Dave's words, what he basically told me was that they were told it was pointless going through the system because the caravan was only being used for welfare purposes in connection with the upkeep of the land. And as such, there was no breach of planning. Um, so at that point, the enforcement um, issue was closed. Uh, and again, in his words, there is no current enforcement problem on that land. Lovely. Thank you very much. Right. OK. Thank you, Amy. I think you've done a good job there with the number Thank of questions you. you've had come in. Um, it looks like that's the no, there are no more hands raised. So if we can, we'll move on to the open debate. And if we could keep it as concise as possible, please, as this is starting to run on a bit. But obviously we need to be thorough to do the application justice. Um, do we have anybody who would like to lead the way? Councillor Tamley, come in. I'll come in as well. Thank you, Chair. Everybody was standing back a bit there, weren't they? Um, I'm actually struggling with this. I'm trying to see the officer's advice note or the chief planning officer's advice note. Um, and it says that um, the form and shape should be have clearly definable boundaries. And I'm struggling to work out where the boundaries are on this. Um, I think you could define it in several different ways. And when we looked at the map, um, with the drawing of the site, it makes it look as though there is a, a, a settlement there. But I think if you took away the lines, you'd really, you know, you see a field, and I don't think you really see where the settlement begins and ends. Um, so I'm not going to put anything forward yet. But I'm, I'm just, I know we're going to be talking about the settlement an awful lot. But at the moment, I just can't see where it is. Okay, thank you, Sam. Councillor Holly, come in. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, the first thing I looked at, <laughs> this is when the planning documents arrived, was to consider whether it was a settlement or not. So the first thing I did was to count the number of houses, Mr Chairman, and there just seems to be too many houses not to be a settlement. I take Sam's point, which is that they are dispersed a bit, but they, they, it's all sort of fairly closely related to the roads around there. Yes, they do have large plots. That's not the point. So that the question is, Mr Chairman, under policy three, which we, the only way we can define this application is under policy three and judge it, is two things. And it says under policy three that, that um, there has to be a gap. They say a small gap in the continuous built frontage. We, but the way I look at it, if you look at the gap, um, the field itself is big, but the gap isn't very, isn't very big, it's quite small. And there's two houses to the east. There's a selection of houses to the west and to the south. And um, the other question we've got to judge it by is, so, so as far as I can see, it is, a, it is a, a, a gap in the frontage. And so it does qualify as infill. The other thing is, does it extend, physically extend into the open countryside? 
because it's surrounded on uh, four of the five sides by the road or other houses, then it doesn't extend into the countryside. So I'm just trying to be as reasonable as possible, Mr Chairman. I think this really does qualify as infill. I understand that, uh, um, oh, I understand the problems about a big house, a tall townhouse or something being built among bungalows. That can be dealt with later if necessary. So where, where I'm coming from, Mr Chairman, fairly simply is that I cannot see how this does not get away from policy three. It clearly fulfills the requirements of policy three, and that's what I'm going to judge on, Mr Chairman, to be fair. Thank you. In that case, I would propose uh, uh, that we approve this because it conforms to policy three, essentially. Thank you. OK, I thank you, Councillor Howard. Uh, all right, Councillor Flashman, if you'd like to come in. Yeah, um, we're all live at seven stones, there are six houses, and it is to Hamlet. It's always been a hamlet. Um, I feel that uh, um, bungalows, it's obviously we've come in for detailed planning, but uh, as um, my learned colleague, Councillor Holly, has pointed out, it clearly meets policy three, and I would second that uh, proposal, and I think we need to move on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Flashman. Uh, Councillor Jordan, your hands raised. Would you like to speak? Yes, I've listened to the debate and um, I was going to propose it, then I was going to second it, but I'm now support it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Barry. Uh, Councillor Fitter, your hand is also raised. Would you like to come in, please? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yes, I will, sir. Um, uh, I have concern about this application in view of the information that's been given to us here today. Um, I accept, I, I will not use the dreaded word S. It, it, it is a difficult one, but I'm more persuaded by the lack of development that has taken place at this location. The officer has been able to confirm there's been a number of applications, but none of them for a standalone development, which would indicate to me that, that that I can't believe that no one has come forward in any of this area with a plot of land and said, can we build it? And so I would suspect that advice has been given that, you know, it would not be received favourably. I'm minded also to listen, uh, to understand and take on board the last appeal decision. Um, we have the grade of the land. Now, now it, it is a small, it, it's over an acre. Uh, and um, but it is the most versatile land, and that has to be a material consideration as to whether we allow development. Um, it, it, this is not a sustainable location. Um, I think everyone would agree that it's not a sustainable location. So the question is, um, do we allow development in what I would have to call the open countryside? Um, it, it certainly doesn't agree with policy nine. And so um, I will not be supporting this application because I believe that it, it, too much has gone on in the past, sir, suddenly for us to turn it all upside down and now say, well, all those previous decisions were wrong and now it's right. I, I can't accept that, really. And so I will not be supporting this application as set out, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fitter. Uh, Councillor Eddy. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I've, I've listened carefully to the arguments. Uh, I agree with a lot of what Councillor Fitter has said. I, I'm not convinced of the arguments that this is a settlement. It's, it's rather a, a quirk of, um, uh, I think, North Cornwall that uh, you get these straggle of houses in the countryside. Uh, there's another one down at Fletcher's Bridge. Straggle of houses set out around a road. Um, there has been no development. We've got the best agricultural land here. Um, and I think we should be giving greater weight to what local people say in the chief planning officer's advisory note. He says, go to the local people, ask their views, seek the views of the parish council and ask them if they think it's a settlement. And clearly in this case, they don't think it's a settlement. Therefore, I will not be supporting the uh, proposal, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reddy. It appears that is there are no more hands raised um so if that's the case um do we want to go to amy or gavin is there anything else you would like to add 
Nothing to add for me, thanks, Chair. It's just that, member, just to remind members again, that it's been a significant step change in how we define settlement. So there, there is a there is a difference between the past and now, insofar that settlement boundaries used to be drawn in the North Cornwall days and they're not in the Cornwall Council days. So that is the step change. But of course, it is a matter of judgment for you as the decision maker as how you wish to define settlement today in accordance with the Cornwall Council definitions. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank you, Gavin. Right, as there are no other hands raised or speakers, and we have a proposal from Councillor Holly, seconded by Councillor Flashman in line with officer's recommendation. Um, can I hand over to Angela, please, to take the vote? Thank you. Councillor Burden. Against. Councillor Creaker. For. Councillor Eddy. Against. Councillor Fitter. Oh, I didn't hear you call my name. Yes. I'm sorry, I missed it. I was um, I was listening carefully. There. Yes, I'm against the application. Thank you. Councillor Flashman. For. Councillor Holly. For. Councillor Jordan. For. Councillor Simmons. Against. Councillor Mould. For. Councillor Pasco. For. Councillor Pugh, are you there? I didn't hear you either. For. Thank you. Councillor Tamlin. Against. Councillor Parsons. Against. Okay, if you just bear with me a moment, I'll count that up. Double check that chairman because it's quite close. Yeah, I can confirm the application has been approved by seven votes in favour, six against, and no abstentions. Okay, thank you, Angela. So the vote is carried. Um, right, we'll move on to the next item, to which I will hand back to our chairman, Councillor Batters. Thank you, Chair. PA 2006919, Spindrift Harlan, Harlan Bay Padstow, um, and it's across to Samuel Fuller for the uh, all the information on the application. Across to you, Samuel. Thank you, Councillor Batters, Chairman. Uh, I'm just going to share the PowerPoint presentation. Is that all visible? Yes, yes, all visible. Thank you. Yes, uh, this is a agenda item uh, number 4.2, spin drift in Harlem Bay, uh, PA 206919. It's the construction of a one two story, four bedroom house um, on that plot. So the key issues to look at um, as it's a, a full application uh, is the principal development. Uh, the design and character and impact to the AOMB, the area of outstanding natural beauty. Uh, any neighbouring impact um, to those neighbours uh, from, from the proposal and the access uh, onto the highway. Uh, so this is a location plan that shows the proposal uh, that's bounded in red. Um, the whole map is, is covered by the area of outstanding natural beauty. The, the special area of conservation isn't actually the, the the site isn't actually in the uh, special area of conservation. The area of conservation is to the north, so it's within the sea, um, and that's the uh, Bristol Channel approaches. Um, but the site isn't in the um, in the SAC or within the zone of influence. Uh, I checked that on the mapping today. Uh, and then there's the um, Canter Wildlife Site, um, which is forms part of the uh, the beach, so that's to, to the north of the site. Uh, and then a site of special scientific interest, which is to the to the left of the screen there. 
So this is the proposal, uh, just showing it on a, a different view. Um, the proposal there shaded in red, um, and then it shows the, the prehistoric cemetery at Harlem Bay. Uh, that's a scheduled monument um, nearby. So this is an aerial plan um, taken from Google Earth uh, showing the site as existing. Um, so if I just move my mouse, this is Spindrift. So that's the existing dwelling on site. And this is the proposal site where the new dwelling shall be. Uh, and then this is the wider settlement of Harlan Bay. So this is the existing plan uh, showing the levels and the existing plots at Spindrift and then the, the surrounding dwellings uh, and then the, the burial ground or cemetery uh, to the right there. So this is a proposed site plan, just shows you the location of, of the dwelling. Um, there's a new Cornish stone face hedgerow here, um, the altered hedgerow here, which does bound up slightly, slightly to the east um, towards the highway that runs along here, uh, and then new access and parking um, included on the site. So this is the, the elevations of the new uh, dwelling. So the new dwelling is to the left here uh, with the stone base. And this is spin drift uh, to the right. Um, this is the northern elevation, uh, which shows the two, and the western elevation, which is side elevation. And um, I don't know how clear that is to you, uh, but that just shows the proposed um, kind of CGI on kind of the, the existing plot. So that's spin drift there and the proposed dwelling and then the surrounding plots behind, there's the two behind there, which can't be seen. Uh, this just shows again uh, a side side uh, elevation uh, of the proposal and this is spin drift um, located here. It does have another floor under there, but just shows the, the levels uh, of the land. The hedgerow goes along this boundary here, um, so that would be slightly screened from, from the highway. Uh, and then this is the, the rear, so this points towards the south uh, and spin drift would be around this location. This can be seen relatively uh, small there. Uh, this just shows the, the sections um, and the floor plans. So this is on the ground floor, the first floor having the accommodation. Um, so it's kind of a, a flipped uh, house, if you will. So this is the, the, the hedge, which is going to be um, slightly revised. Um, so this shows the existing hedgerow, which runs along here. It's going to be, I'll show you on different um, different slides. It's going to go slightly, slightly out and in, just following that kind of that line there, but it is still slightly indented from that raised section. Um, that does show kind of how, how it will be, but I'll show you in, that, in other photos, which shows the visibility and the hedgerow a bit, bit further. Uh, this is just the building sizes, so footprints um, within the area. So we've got uh, the proposal, which is 106, I believe. Um, it's not overly clear on that, but it's 106 and then 131, one, uh, which is spin drift and just shows you the, the surrounding area and kind of where the proposed dwelling will be in relation to the, the general scale um, around the settlement. So this is a a visual uh, of the proposal uh, site. So if you see my mouse, this is the proposed uh, dwelling here on the visual, and this is existing plot spin drift and the surrounding settlement. You can see that I guess the, the general housing patterns uh, within the area. This one's a bit clearer. Um, you can just see the, the kind of the, the character of the the site, and this is the CGI proposal. Um, on the on the site looking from the north uh, so we're looking from the kind of the private road highway is behind that hedgerow there and this is the hedgerow that's slightly been altered you can see there's existing uh, kind of dwellings behind here as well so it's it appears uh, as part of the settlement uh, and, and its form so this shows the uh which is a, a matter of kind of interest uh, the, the access so this shows the existing uh, sight line from a 2.4 metre setback. So that's in line with the manual for streets guidance um, as to where where a, uh, a driver will be positioned in the car uh, from the front uh, so it doesn't protrude beyond the, the highway. Um, so that, that's where the highway starts. So going back to 2.4, that's the visibility as it stands. This is the new hedgerow 
and that's the new visibility uh, proposed. This down here shows the difference in visibility, largely from a 2.4 metre setback. So that's the existing hedgerow here, uh, and this is the proposed. Um, I've also got an image uh, because the hedgerow has been uh, removed and replanted um, at the moment. Uh, so this this does show the, um, the existing level. So this is where a car would emerge. There's a nice kind of line there which shows largely where, where cars will, will be. Um, it shows it is, is set back kind of behind vis blades. Um, so visibility should, should not be a significant issue. Uh, and that, that should be highlighted in my report as well. Uh, just some photos of the site. So this is the existing site. It's got a low stone faced um, kind of wall here. And uh, this is the hedgerow, which has been slightly altered. Uh, this was prior to its remo part, part removal. Um, just shows the existing house spin drift. Uh, house will be here. Cornish uh, face hedgerow just around the back uh, and no access around here. Just another photo. This is the tennis court, which you see on the aerials. So this is the house uh, of spin drift. Um, and the proposal site will be around here. Uh, and then there's the form behind as well. Just another visual. Um, just shows the existing dwelling spin drift. Um, it's kind of staggered levels uh, and bulk and then other dwellings behind. Again, just a similar photo showing the site, just so you're aware of it. Uh, this is just the viewpoint from the uh, Pueblo Rato east, east of the beach. Um, so it's a bit far away, so it's not entirely obvious where uh, the building is. I, I believe spin drift is, is around here and the, the site's going to be screened mostly by, by trees, it just shows the impact really uh, from further views. Uh, and this is uh, just one kind of setback from the roads, just so you kind of appreciate the uh, kind of the, the setting as to, as to where the, the proposal shall be. So the proposal site will be you know, around here um, and it's going to kind of be set within, I guess, the existing form uh, and built form of the, of the settlement. Um, Yep, so with all that, uh, the balance of consideration. So the proposal is considered to be uh, an infill development within uh, a defined settlement. Um, the increase in hazard density is considered to be acceptable um, and the design uh, is viewed to kind of uh, enhance or, or conserve the, the wider character uh, and conserve the natural qualities of the area of outstanding natural beauty. Uh, and it is believed that uh, suitable access has been demonstrated and level, level visibility is acceptable. Uh, with all those considerations taken into account, officers are minded to approve uh, with conditions as set up within the report. Thank you very much, Samuel. Samuel. Um, okay. um, do you want me to have my, sorry, oh, do, you my, um, oh, do you want my PowerPoint just to stay up? Oh, yes, or? yes, okay, sorry. It just might be helpful, I don't know. I'll just... Um, I'll just leave on the visual. I think that's the one that helps most, really. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Fine. Um, our first speaker is Neville Powell. Is Neville Powell with us, Angela, please? Um, yes, yeah. I think he is. Good morning, Mr. Powell. Oh, yeah. Good morning, members. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Yes. Um, you have three minutes to give us your details. We'll give you a 30 second warning before the end of it. So when you're ready, away you go. Thank you. OK, uh, thank you for allowing me to speak to you regarding this application. Um, you'll be aware I've already sent some background information. Uh, the proposed dwelling will be visible from vantage points within the AOMB, including the coastal footpath. Um, I do not consider that this application fully balances the three dimensions of sustainable development as described in the National Planning Policy Framework. In particular, I find the proposed development would fundamentally fail to fulfil its environmental role in terms of protecting and enhancing the natural built and historic environment that it would sit within if allowed to proceed. Therefore, the presumption in favour of allowing sustainable development to proceed should not apply in this particular case. I would therefore respectfully urge Cornwall Council to refuse this application. Until very recently, Harlem Warren consisted of holiday homes with occasional use and thus traffic levels emerging onto the main road were relatively light. This proposal involves an additional dwelling as a permanent residence, and the applicants also been involved with a second recent application for another permanent residence dwelling within the Harlem Warren estate. Thus, future traffic levels from the estate onto the main road will be significantly increased. 
Hundreds of pedestrians walk this road daily in peak season. It's very dangerous, narrow, with no pavement and many blind bends. There are few safe havens for these pedestrians, so many step back into the entrance of Harlem Warren to avoid heavy traffic before stepping back onto the road. The proposed alterations, which have already been completed in recent weeks by the applicant in order to make this building plot viable, lengthen this blind bend and substantially increase this danger. They create a position where pedestrians can appear in the road at point blank range for oncoming vehicles traveling down the hill who would be unable to stop in the event of a pedestrian popping out from behind this new structure. Uh, in the absence of any data provided by the applicant, I've obtained a professional report which shows that the required visibility distance as set out in the Department of Transport publication Manual for Streets is likely to be in the region of 65 metres. The existing visibility is only 30 metres, which clearly shows that improvements are necessary, particularly given current road usage. Um, in conclusion, I must ask that in the event that permission is granted for any additional dwellings in Harding Warren, that a precondition be considered setting the requiring the visibility spray to be increased to a minimum of 65 metres. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Mr. Powell. If you can hold for a moment in case there are any questions for yeah. you for clarification purposes. Um, can you confirm to me, first of all, um, how close you might be to the location, whereabouts your residence might be, please? Oh, you, you, no, I do. I live in uh, residence opposite the location. Right opposite the location. Hello. Thank you very yeah. much indeed. Right. OK, are there any questions for clarification, yeah, yeah. please, of the Councillor Fitter, John? Hi there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm, I just all, I'm already on, on the landline. Could I just ask a question about the, the hedge? Presumably, in actual fact, um, right. the hedge has been removed uh, uh, um, and has already been pushed out. Is that correct, sir? Um, well, the, the hedge hasn't been removed. The, the original hedge is there. What's happened is a bank has been built up, which is basically constructed of sand, um, which in, that, that is what basically is obscuring the visibility for vehicles coming down the hill. A new hedgerow has been put much closer to the road and is likely to grow out in, into the road, um, which effectively will follow the line of the hedge that already exists a, around this blind bend. And that, that's my concern. Pedestrians can step out from behind this, this hedge and they'll be basically coming out at point blank range into the main road. Yeah, was, was the hedge that I can see in the picture now, it shows the visibility that it's shown, there's nothing wrong. Was that there before or they've just cut the top off? Um, they haven't cut the top off. They, 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 they've they brought the hedge out towards the road. The hedge was previously set back a considerable distance from the road. Right. So 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 they have actually constructed a, a new hedge adjacent to the highway. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, John. Are there any other questions for clarification purposes, please? I don't see any chair. Vice chair, is that correct? Correct, Chairman. In that case, thank you very much, Mr. Powell. You're welcome yep, to continue uh, watching our live stream. Um, thank you very much for attending. Moving across yep. to our second speaker now, Councillor Elderfield from St. Marin uh, Parish Council. Are you there, please? Um, yes, it's Angela from Democratic Services. He is present, but I had to mute him as I was getting some background noise. So, Fine. Councillor Elderfield, if you can hear me, you need to press star six on your telephone keypad and that will unmute you. Yeah, he's with us now, Chairman. Hi. Good morning, Chancellor Elderfield. Good morning, Chairman. Um, you have three minutes to uh, to explain your case to us. We will give you 30 seconds warning before the end. So when you're ready, if you start and hold on afterwards for any questions, possibly. Thank you. Excellent. Good morning, councillors. Firstly, the Parish Council feels the height, scale, mass and location of the proposed dwelling will make for an incongruous form of development in the front lawn of a property in the designated area. With the majority of dwellings in Harlem Warren being bungalows with spacious lawns in their curtilage. If this proposal is approved, it is felt that this will somewhat diminish the rural beauty of the location and will pave the way for other applications on the estate and quickly become overdeveloped, losing its rural spacious appeal within the AOMV. The Proposed dwellings ground floor level appears to be some three metres below the ground floor level of the host dwelling Spindrift, 
but its ridge height is only 50 centimetres lower than that of Spindrift, clearly making the proposal dominate the location in its height, not respecting the topography of the sloping land. It is also felt that the gable end facing street scene is unacceptable and viewed against the gable end of Spindrift clearly shows the dominance of the proposed dwelling. Secondly, the close proximity of the proposed dwelling to the host will create overlooking an uncomfortable and living environment for any future occupants, should there be a change of ownership. <laughs> Thirdly, by shoehorning the proposal into the location, necessitating the relocation of the road hedge, will lessen an already inadequate visibility display. Harlan Bay is becoming increasingly popular all year round, and any alteration should be to the betterment to an already inadequate C-class road. In summary, it is conceded that the proposal would be supported by policy three of the local plan, B&E uh, infill or PDL, but this does not mean it should not comply with other policies. It is felt that for the reasons set out that the proposal does not comply with policy 12, 23 and 27 of the Cornwall local plan. It was suggested to the officer that the proposal adjacent to uh, it was suggested to the officer that a proposal adjacent to the west of Spindrift would, would gain parish support, but, but except that this not, is not a proposal before us. However, if the present proposal is approved, what is to stop another proposal coming forward adjacent, and before we know it, it will be like the townscape. Thank you for your time, and we welcome any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the speaker for clarification, please? Um, Jim Flaskin here. Yes, Jim, go ahead. Um, good morning. Um, uh, it was mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of the properties in your area are holiday. In percentage, how many, should, how many of those are permanent dwellings that are actually in the application area that you know about? Thank you. In Harlem Bay itself? Yeah. Um, oh, we've got one, two, three, we've got the um, four, six, bacon, six, and no more than about 10 dwellings out of probably, uh, I think there must be a 50 or 60 in Harlem Bay. Okay, that's all right. Thank you. Any other questions of the, for clarification purposes of the speaker, please? Doesn't appear to be Vice Chair, no? In that case, we will say thank you very much, Mr. Elderfield. You're welcome to watch, of course, the rest of the meeting on live stream. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Robert Sykes. Uh, is he with us, please, Angela? Um, we do have another caller on the line that isn't the same number that I have for Mr. Sykes. It ends with 74. Can I just ask um, the caller who that is, please? Hi, this is Mr. Sykes. Oh, it is, Chairman. Lovely. Ah, sneaking in on another phone, Mr. Sykes. <laughs> <laughs> right, hi, okay, hello, Simon. good morning to you. Um, hi, welcome there. to the meeting. You've got three minutes to put your um, details forward. We will give you 30 seconds warning before the end. And um, if you hold for any questions that might be forthcoming. So when you're ready, away you go. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm joined here by my partner and our talented architect, Marta, with whom I wish to build a family home. The Hartland Warren estate has been within my wider family for 112 years. As, su as such, nobody is more sensitive to the impact of development in this area than us ourselves. Alas, our life plans have been altered and we now wish to make Harlan our family abode and raise our children within the local community. The existing house Spindrift, which is shared by my siblings, occupies a very large plot of 0.8 acres. This compares to around just 0.6 acres for the four houses of the neighboring Polmark Drive and the five houses of the new hideaways development. We are seeking permission to build just one modestly sized house on an infill plot adjacent to Spindrift. The, uh, the proposed house itself will have nearly 1,000 square meters of land with a building footprint of just 108 square meters. Whilst we were advised that this plot could carry a much larger house, it was never our ambition to maximize size. Instead, we're motivated to create a sensitively designed house that meets our family's needs and embraces the unique natural environment rather than standing out from it. Our proposal neatly reflects and respects the existing settlement pattern as advised by the Cornwall Landscape Character Best Practice Guide. And our architect has designed a house that most of our neighbors are really pleased with. In terms of policy 12 of the local plan, we've been extra careful to make sure we align. The size is moderate. 
We've also made the decision to drop the roof ridge line half a meter lower than Spindrift. We also have the advantage of a sloping site, which we plan to bury 50% of the ground floor into to reduce the visible mass further. Finally, we decided to commit to using local natural materials of Cornish stone and timber cladding. The result is a house that blends into the environment and complies with the Cornwall Design Guide. Further, the very principle of new housing in Harlan Warren has been established by the recent approval at the Chase opposite us. In this area, it is common for the smallest extension to receive a backlash of negativity. Instead of the 20 public comments, the vast majority were in favour. The objector from Polmark Drive, Neville Powell, regrettably stands to have his view impacted. Our design has sought to minimise this impact as a gesture. From positive discussions with the other homeowners within Harlan Warren and Sandy Lane behind, the consensus was that our plans would be a significant upgrade to the look and feel of the estate. Also, it was seen as a real advantage to have us make our home here and add to the year-round sense of life and community at Harlan. One concern raised by the Parish Council was that of amenity, specifically privacy. As a result, we've added a Cornish hedge between the two rear gardens. However, all of the houses within Harlan Warren are set in a uniquely open environment with no physical boundaries between houses. This works for us given that all houses are owned by relatives and we love the sense of natural space. Indeed, the most proximate houses will be our own Spindrift and Penrest and Chase to the north and they are fully supportive of our proposals. It may be somewhat strange to outside observers but it is an environment we've enjoyed for generations and I believe we've found the right balance of privacy and authenticity to this setting. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. If you could hold just for a moment, please. Are there any questions of clarification for the speaker, please? Jim, yeah. Yes, Jim. Yeah, um, good morning. Um, there was some uh, interest on the uh, access onto the road. Uh, I know highways are supporting it, but um, are you altering it from what it is at the moment? No, for what it is at the moment, no. So the new hedgerow was planted earlier this year after consultation with uh, Samuel Fuller and the highways uh, representative who said that there, you know, we have factual evidence that the sight lines are not impacted at okay. all. So and we've planted the hedge three meters back from the roadside. Originally, we planned to plant it around 1.5 meters back. We've planted it three meters back after discussions with Bodmin Nurseries, they talked about the spread of the growth of the bushes, the plant, the hedgerow at maturity. Um, and so even at maturity, the edge of the hedge would be around 1.5 meters from the existing road. That bank that Samuel showed in the photo has now been turfed uh, to hold that in place and, and, uh, and ensure that distance from the roadside is maintained. Whilst the existing tamarisk hedge that continues up the road is immediately abutting the roadside. So as soon as it comes to the new hedge, there will be a kink and it will be set back comfortably from the road. So no impact on visibility at all. Okay, and uh, a secondary <laughs> question if I may, Chairman. Um, they mentioned the historic environment. Um, I've been involved with a couple of um, uh, areas where the historic environment are there when the dig uh, starts. Now, are they going to uh, rebury any artifacts that they dig up or are they going to put them up for public view if they should find any can you answer that uh, if that question is for me it will take the guidance of the of the archaeologist yeah. on that okay uh, and yeah, we'll I, think follow fair, I think it's a fair answer thank you very much <laughs> yep. okay councillor holly derek yeah thank you mr chairman um, one of my concerns uh, is for traffic levels and uh, it's, that of course is related to the use of it. So you say that um, it's a holiday home for you and your siblings, but I notice it's on Airbnb, one of the first ones that comes up actually. So um, if it does attract um, neighbors, uh, visitors for the Airbnb use, would you be prepared to put a sign on the entrance saying take care when emerging pedestrians or something like that if we're minded to approve? Yes, of course. So Spindrift, the existing house, is used as, primarily as a holiday home um, for about sort of 10, 10 weeks of the year and by the family the rest of the year. Uh, so um, we'll be very, very happy to add a sign uh, to, to, to uh, tell people to uh, take extra care with emerging traffic. Absolutely not an issue at all. Thank you very much. Are there any more questions for clarification? I cannot see any on my screen. 
If I oh, share, so and it's Angela, I can see Councillor Pugh has his hand yeah. up. Sorry, to Councillor Pugh's oh, there as Angela. Oh, sorry. Says. Yes, Richard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, Jim asked the very same question about the visibility display, but I'll just ask, ask again a little bit more. The, the the other houses that used your road, I think there's six of them, is that correct? There's eight houses in total, uh, and, and as mentioned, there's a ninth one being constructed at the moment, uh, the Granny Annex. And how many of those are permanently lived in? Uh, there'll just be us. Uh, well, there'll just be the one, the Granny Annex, which will be a permanent residence. Um, so the rest are holiday homes. So it was because you were asked to to move the visibility display by the uh, uh, by the uh, the officer. That that's why you did it. We weren't actually asked to. Uh, the the visibility display, as you can see, is already very generous uh, compared to most of the other lanes in the area. Um, we weren't asked to plant the hedgerow further back than the edge. I think it would, even if it was planted right on the edge, it wouldn't have had an impact on visibility. But we were worried about the response from the parish council. And so just to be extra safe, we planted it three meters back. So no one actually asked us to do it. We took the decision to just to make sure it was a not, take that issue off the table. Thank you very much. Okay, no other hands up from what yeah. I can see. So Mr. Speaker, um, Mr. Yeah, Chairman, at all, yes. Yeah, I, I just got a quick question because I'm intrigued um, about the hedgerow. Um, why, you know, the question must be, why actually was was it altered at all? Was it necessary to fit the new development in, or it was just because they decided they wanted to do it? I'm not quite sure why. Why, why the visibility spray was actually altered to cause possibly possible concern or not as the case may be. Um, uh, so I wonder if you could tell us why, please. Yeah, no problem at all. So first of all, tamarisk hedges are meant to last around sort of 60 to 80 years. This one has exceeded that and it was failing in part. So you can see even at, full, you know, I have a series of photos I've sent, sent to Mr. Fuller with gaps in the hedge and that one on the right shows you some of those gaps even in full summer bloom. So the hedge is failing in parts and the kids love to run through it and there's a safety issue and a privacy issue already. So we had been planning on replacing the hedge regardless of this application. But the benefit as well as providing a new, more, more uh, secure and private hedgerow, the benefit was that it gives a bit of extra breathing space for the new house. So the new house would have fitted in, um, but this just gives it a bit of extra space, a bit of extra breathing space. Um, as well as providing greater degree of privacy and security from from the passing uh, pedestrian and road traffic. So, so uh, you, what you're saying is that you didn't actually need to put the hedge or alter this hedge and alter the visibility spray. Um, it was just because you wanted to make you have more privacy. Is that right? Yeah, it's a it's a case of privacy and also security because you, you know people can even walk through it where there's gaps in the hedge further up. <laughs> Um, and, and yes, it does enable us to have more space for the house, but we could have fit in the house without moving it yet, <coughs> hypothetically. Thank you. Okay. Right, in that case, um, thank you very much, Mr. Sykes. And you can no continue problem. watching on live stream. Thank you. Okay, um, and we now move to the divisional member, Councillor Buskin. and Richard, you have five minutes, at which time I'll be looking for you to wind down. Okay. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Chairman. I am here today to support the views of St Mary Parish Council in their endeavour to see this application refused. In this regard, I would like to make a number of points. To begin with, I would like to refer the committee to the letter from Mr Nick Powell as circulated to members last week. To remind everyone, Mr Powell is a former Deputy Director of Planning and Transport at Cornwall County Council and although contributing here today as an opponent of the application, he is nevertheless still a Fellow of the Chartered Institute of Civil Engineers and therefore I would suggest someone whose views should be taken seriously. I would not wish to restate uh, any of the arguments Mr Powell puts forward for uh, danger of confusing the committee. I would, however, just like to restate his final paragraph, namely that 
until the applicant can show that divisibility splays meets the current requirements of the Department of Transport publication manual for streets, and this has been checked and agreed by a qualified person, I believe that the application should be turned down. So why is this uh, so important? Well, it has already been stated uh, that throughout the holiday season, hundreds of pedestrians walk up and down the road each day, and this number increases each year and is likely to peak again this summer. It is dangerous and narrow with no pavements and there are new, numerous blind bends. Moving on, I would also now like to turn to the form and density of the proposed property and to the characteristics of the area itself. Councillor Elderfield has highlighted the dilemma before the committee today in considering an application such as this, located as it is in the A1MB, in what in many ways is a unique development and one which is visible from the coastal footpath. Any, anyone familiar with Harlan Warren will be aware that it is not in any way a normal collection of homes. It has a beauty and a charm which is of value not just to the current residents, but to all of us who live in the area. In a wider sense, it belongs to us all. We might not own the deeds to the properties, but it is an intrinsic part of our wider community. Therefore, Mr. Andrew Elderfield is correct in alerting the committee to the fact that if the proposal is approved, it will diminish the rural beauty of the location and could pave the way for other applications on the estate, resulting in a loss of its character and idyllic atmosphere. So with the close proximity of the dwelling to the host property, the fact that in any other circumstances, we will be looking uh, and talking about overlooking a loss of privacy, and with the majority of dwellings on the Warren being bungalows with spacious lawns in their curtilage, I conclude my remarks by urging you to reject this application. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you, Richard. Any any questions for the divisional member? If not, we'll go into questions. Yeah, nothing appeared, so we'll go into questions for the officer, please. Any questions for clarification purposes of the officer? Um, could I ask a question about the environment? Tuesday planning officer, please. Yeah, is it, yeah, certainly needs long clarification, yes. Yeah, on the historic environment, I did ask earlier on about what happens if the uh, artifacts are found. Will they be reburied on the site or will they be removed uh, on the show for the general public to see? <laughs> Uh, I'm not entirely sure. There's, there's, there's a condition uh, as part of the, our recommendation uh, that there's a um, you know, site survey has been looked at during its excavation. So if anything is found, um, I can't remember the, the wording of, of the, um, the condition, uh, but you know, it, it would likely in line procedure probably be shown to, to the public if there's anything of you know, special artifact. Um, so yeah, that, I'd assume that would be the case um, for, for this application as well. I can help there, Councillor. It's Gavin Smith speaking. We've got a condition requiring a written scheme of investigation. So it all yep. depends on what's found. And we would be led by our experts in that field, depending on what is found. But the condition does make provision, specific provision for um, recording on anything that is found. So we don't know yet because we don't know what's under there. It may be that it, it, there isn't anything, but if something is found, we will be led by experts in the field if that yep. does occur. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fitter, I think John, you got your hand up. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yeah, I, I was just going to um, uh, ask Sam, um, when the Warrens were given their original permission for development, and it's an exclusive um, site, um, there must have been highways considerations and they made a very generous visibility spray at the entrance, which was presumably part of the original plan permission for the first house that went in or the second or the third house, whatever. So um, if that's the case, uh, what has changed that we, we can now have a restriction that is indicated by Mr. Buscombe through Mr. Powell that um, the applicant, you know, he has concern about this visibility spray now. I, I just wondered, you know, given we're adding another property, I would have thought it's more important than ever that we should keep the existing visibility spray. Yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, obviously with um, a new dwelling there, we would like to be a, a material increase in, in its use. Um, from the, the plans that we've been submitted, um, 
I don't believe there's there's going to be any um, impact or negligible impact uh, to the visibility displays that are currently achieved. Um, I, I believe um, you know it, it, it's an access that's got suitable visibility, visibility um, as secured. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any additional impact uh, yeah. on this development. Could, could you just clarify? I'm still trying to get my head. You, we've got the picture up there now, and we've got the two grass verges at the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Now, is that how they will be when this development is concluded? Will they be exactly like that? Or will they have in any part came out? Would any of that grass area that we see in the bottom two pictures, will any of that grass area be come out further? Be be built on or or you know extend. I, I'm not quite yeah, sure. No, I'm, yeah, I understand. So yeah, no, this bit won't be uh, um, you know planted on. Um, this shows the existing um, hedgerow, and this shows uh, it's kind of CGI of the, the proposed. Um, so it's going to be set back. Um, as as that we can uh, did explain, it's going to be set back slightly further than what this CGI shows, um, and that's shown on on this one here. So it's slightly mm -hmm. further back even from there. So that should hopefully show kind of what the existing is and what the proposed is, even though this is slightly further forward than what is actually planted in, in situ. Um, I think we've got, we've got a hires officer um, with us. It should be annoying. Um, yes. you might well, be able to perhaps I could put it another way with your permission to chairman. If we take the top two pictures, you've got on the, on the top picture on the left, you've got a blue line that runs down. It ends with the words 2.4 metres. Mm -hmm. Now, that blue, does that does the hedge come out to that? Is that good? I'm trying to explain. I, I can't just get my head around it. It, Does shouldn't, the hedge come out? That line. it shouldn't protrude beyond that line and, or interfere with the um, with the the um, the visibility. And there can be, um, if the committee wishes, you know, a, a condition that you know makes sure the the hedge is pruned, uh, you know, behind those visibility lines. Uh, that could be an additional. Uh, a condition um, if that's of concern. Um. Mm. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't think I still don't understand, but thank you. Oh, I can help. <laughs> I can, hopefully, I can help. There, you know, are you looking at the slide now, um, Councillor Futter? Yeah, I'm looking at the you slide. Know the, big, the, the big, the white fat line that shows the realigned hedge on the right. And if you look at this slide on the left, you can see. It is going a little bit to the right. That white line actually transfers the hedge a little bit to the right, then comes in. So it is continuing more along the road frontage than it used to be. With regards to visibility from the junction itself, I think that's the probably the area of primary concern. We do have our always officer here to ha have a discussion with you about visibility if you'd like to ask him some questions. No, I, I, I really at this stage, and thank you, Gavin, I think you've been helpful because I you. couldn't see if anything had changed or not. But it seems in actual fact it has changed because the white line comes further to the right. So it, it, it pushes out because the, um, the the applicant said it gives them a little bit more headroom inside the site. And I, I couldn't see how they could get the headroom if less something was going to be moved out. So I, I, I'm a little bit clearer now. It yeah, has come slow to the right. It's been moved out, hasn't it? Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I understand now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Councillor Eddy, Martin. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we we heard from Councillor Buscombe, uh, and we we've had a letter from Mr. Powell with some technical details around this play. I wonder if. Sam, you could you could say that those that letter has been taken into consideration uh, uh, and and the points incorporated in this report is that so have those concerns those issues been addressed by what we have before us today, Sam? Yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah, um, we we've looked at the visibility. Um, I think that there are certain uh, distances which accesses should uh, achieve. Um, yeah, we might be below below that. Um, I think the the issue stands that we're not making it any worse and it's, it is still a generous um, kind of visibility that's been achieved and it is existing at the moment. Um, so we're not we're not making the excess visibility any worse um, as, as shown on, on, on the plans. Um, so yeah, it has been taken into account, but um, we, we don't see how there's a, a kind of a, a high raise uh, concern um, in, in that respect. So you're satisfied that what we have before us is is um, is is okay. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Martin.
Um, I've got I've got another hand up, but unfortunately on my screen it's gone up under my name, so I've got a double overlay. You might say, is it, is somebody waiting the question? Chairman, I can't see any hand raised. No, okay, I've got one. Yeah, I've got one appears over my name, but it's not my hand, you know. But okay, if that's all, then in that case we move into open debate. Who would like to start open debate? Oh, a real rush forward here. Someone like well, to start the open debate? I'll start it, Mr. Chairman, to move things on. I'd like to support the planning officer and approve this application. And I'd also want to make sure that the historic environment are involved from the very start and all the conditions that have been put forward are um, committed to so that any growth on the hedge will be of regularly trimmed to keep the visibility display as it is. So that's a recommended for approval. Fine. Um, Richard Pugh, Councillor Pugh. Uh, oops, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'd like to second that if I may, please. I've yeah, listened certainly. to everything that's been said this morning. They've made an effort to move the hedge to increase the visibility. I don't know why they did it, but they've done it. Um, the house is the same height by the looks of things as the existing house. So I haven't got a problem with it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Holly. Oh, thank you, Mr Chairman. First of all, I'm saddened by the opportunity that was missed to increase road safety for pedestrians by some sort of footpath along that sort of quite long boundary of Spindrift, but that's by and by. Um, we've had some comments about holiday homes, Mr Chairman, which are only relevant, I suppose, if we're considering the change or not in traffic coming in and out. And anyway, holiday homes is only something that can be taken up by a group of determined MPs who've got some guts in this county anyway, so that's not going to happen. So I, I don't I don't like Mr Chairman the um, design particularly I think it's poor for the area I think the design is sort of over dominated by cladding has got an incongruous roof honestly to me it looks a sort of sort of chicken house like but I accept it's a sort of brutal modernism that's quite popular with architects at the moment I do bear in mind Mr Chairman that this is not a historic village and so I'm satisfied by the highways comments and even though I don't like the design, I think I'm going to, I'm going to support it, Mr Chairman, because I think it ticks the other boxes. Thank you. Fine, thank you. Um, Councillor Mould, um, yes, you've got your hand up. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yeah, I mean, knowing this area, I, I, I would have had serious concerns about the access in this road. There is no road safety there. It, it, that, the, um, the, the, the pedestrian and traffic conflict is, is alive and well there most of the summer season. As we all know, our seasons run on. But like others, I and I don't like the design and I think these things set a precedent and and I fully concur with what Councillor Buscom has said. You know, these places are spoiled beyond recognition and looking at it from the coastal path. Sometimes people do look at it and think, my goodness me, whatever's gone on. But there is no real material reason for refusing this. All those things don't add up for me. Um, to be able to support a refusal. So I just would like it noted that they are my feelings, but I do feel that the, that especially the um, the traffic and the, the lack of a safe footway there and the access to that estate, anybody that knows that area well knows that that is a, it's been a dodgy access for a long time, but we are where we are, Mr. Chairman, so I will be supporting. Thank you. Last one on the list for me is Councillor Fitter. John. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I would refer to the um, submissions made by, by Richard Buscombe, who's brought them on behalf of the parish. I, I think this is a very sensitive area, the Warrens. It's certainly historically and archaeologically, it's a very, very sensitive site. And that is why um, the Cornwall Council Historical Environment Plan and Ar Archaeology sections ha have really come back three times on it. It, it, it is one cannot overestimate that the, the museum that used to be down the bottom there that um, Mr Mallet um, developed um built the um opened the graves in 1900 I believe um it, it's a very sensitive area and, and so this will be a very sensitive site I, I think that um Richard also said we, we're shoehorning a building in to the, the, if they 
if the parish and the, the, the local member have the concerns about the shoehorning, why ever didn't they put it on the tennis court, which is further inland and where there would have been less damage to the road and the danger of the visibility. Uh, and yet we're shoehorning in. The applicant has sort of indicated that the hedge nonsense, and I still don't get my head around it really, but it seems to be that it's to give them more headroom to fit this house in. So I, I, it's an overdevelopment of the site, in my opinion. And the other thing is the ANOB, I noticed that they haven't, in actual fact, offered any objection. But then again, they haven't offered any reason why they support it. They just seem to have said nothing. Uh, and that does concern me because looking from um, the seller's end of Harlin, that's the Travaux's, end, Travaux's head end, as you come around on the coastal footpath, you look up to these buildings uh, and you, you, you do wonder, as Carol Mould has said, you know, what is happening to this area? You know, why are we allowing these sort of developments to go on so close to the coastal footpath? I, I, I can't see a reason for it. The Warrens is, uh, as has been said, it, it, it's uh, it's virtually a private in, in estate and um, it's jolly nice estate, but it's, you know, it, it is, it gives a feeling of space. And I think putting this house right at the edge of the road is going to be detrimental, not only to the local area, but to the Warrens itself. I, I, I'm really disappointed that they wanted to go down this road. I will not be supporting it, Mr Chairman, because I believe your local member and the parish council have offered enough reasons to why we should have concern over this application, so I will not be supporting it. Thank you, sir. Fine. Thank you, John. I don't see any other speakers on my list, so... Uh, Chairman, Councillor Burden has just raised ah, his hand. Neil, is it right? You're the that's one that's hidden under my name now, then. Okay, Neil. Okay. Um, sorry, Mr Chairman. I, 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 I struggle with this two, on two reasons. One is the NLB. If we aren't careful, we're going to have destroy all the NOB visual aspects along the coast because we keep on allowing things to happen. And I, I just think that uh, the planning officer may say it's all right, but the NOB is not being taken into consideration and nor the VISTA. And I think that uh, people come to Cornwall to enjoy that openness. And if you aren't careful, you destroy it. And yeah, I struggle with it. I, I didn't understand. I, I'm a bit like Councillor Fitter, really. I didn't understand about the hedge. It almost seems a, a way, a means to do something, uh, get a planning approval. But I, I struggle with it. And I also struggle with the design. But surely, you know, we don't want this. Um, we've never looked after the fenestration of our buildings. And I just think that uh, it's time we did. Uh, so I can't support it. I may have to abstain. But I, 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 I struggle. Thank you. Fine, thank you. Thank you, Neil. Um, right, I think that's the, if you take your hand down, Neil, that's fine. In that case, we will go to the vote, which is a proposal by Councillor Flashman, seconded by Councillor Pugh, to go in line with recommendation. Of course to you, Angela. Thank you, Chairman. So, um, members will be. Uh, this is a vote uh, to approve as set out in the report. Councillor Burden. Uh, refuse. So you're get against. Yeah. Councillor Craker. Councillor Craker. Four. 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 Thank you. Councillor Eddy. Four. Councillor Fitter. Refuse. Councillor Flashman. Four. Councillor Holly. Four. Councillor Jordan. Councillor Jordan. Four. Councillor Simmons. Against. Councillor Mould. Four. Councillor Pasco. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. Councillor Tamlin. Four. Councillor Parsons. Against. Councillor Batters. Councillor Batters. Yeah, four. Thank you. I'll just count that up a moment. OK, um, we have 14 members eligible to vote here and the motion is 
for approval has um, been carried by 10 votes in favour and four against. Thank you very much. In that case, if you wish, we'll take a five minute comfort break. But can we keep it to five minutes? It's now 12.04, so we're back ready to go at 12.09, 10 immediately on the way up 10. OK, Angela? Yep, Chairman. Thank you. And if you can make sure your microphones and cameras are off whilst you depart from your screen. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, this is um, Richard Holmes. Yep. Hi there. I'll, I'll just hang on here. Yeah. If you would like to do a roll call, Angela, just to make sure everyone's here. 
then we'll get we'll get going at twelve ten. Are you there, Angela? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Chairman, I was on oh, mute. Yeah, I'll just yeah. run through the list. Councillor Burden. No, Councillor yeah, I'm Burden. here, sorry. You are, thank Present. you. <laughs> Councillor Craker. Councillor Craker. Councillor Eddie. Here. Councillor Fitter. Here. Councillor Flashman. Here. Holly. Present and correct, ma'am. Councillor Simmons. Yes, here. Councillor Mould. Councillor Mould. Councillor Pascoe. Yes, present and correct. Councillor Pugh. Here. Councillor Tamlin. Here. Councillor Parsons. Present. Here, Councillor Batters. I'll just try Councillor Craker. Councillor Craker, are you there? You missed me as well. Yeah, sorry, it's Councillor Craker here. I'm back. You, Councillor Jordan. Councillor yes. Mould was the other one, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah Councillor Mould and Councillor Jordan. Yeah, I'm here, Councillor yeah. Jordan. Thank Councilor you. Mould. Right, well, we'll get underway. Yeah, uh, we'll get underway. Um, we're now on 4-3 on the agenda. PA 20 11275, land adjacent to Church Park St Melian. Uh, it's being presented by George Shirley. George, across to you. Thank you, Chairman. And good afternoon, members. Uh, OK, yep, yeah, application. Uh, PA 20 forward slash 11275, uh, land adjacent to Church Park St Melian. Outline application for the construction of up to two dwellings with all matters reserved. So the key issue is whether or not the location of development is suitable with regards to development plan policies. So the application site is located on the western edge of St Melian Village um, and it's to the east of St Melian Golf Course and Estate. Uh, the site is within, within an area of great landscape value. So the site itself uh, forms part of a field which is adjacent to the golf course. You'll see that on the next slide. Uh, so you've got the golf course to the west and then you've got dwellings which form uh, part of St Melian Village to the east. Uh, yep, so you can see uh, the application site here and the aerial plan. So the red line only incorporates part of this uh, field, part of the wider parcel of land. Uh, so the, west, the western boundary of the application site doesn't actually follow any identifiable feature. Um, and then you can see the golf course on the west, to the west of the wider parcel of land, and then St Melian Village uh, to the east. So just moving on to the photo. So the entrance to the application site is on the left hand side with the shot here. You can just about see the uh, gap in the hedge. Uh, this road lane goes on to St Melian um, Estate and Golf Course. And then you can see some of the dwellings which form part of St Melian Village uh, on the right hand side of the shot. And then this is just looking back to where that first photo was taken from. So um, entrance to the application site is on the right hand side uh, and then further beyond is St Melian Village. Now moving into the application site so you can see it is just uh, an undeveloped field uh, laid to grass which is fairly flat. Uh, the red line of the application site uh, I would anticipate is in the approximate position of that jeep which would then run back down to the uh, to the hedge to the rear of that shot. And then this is just looking to the right from where that shot was taken towards St Melian Golf Club. 
And then just looking back to where those initial photos are taken. So you can see two dwellings here um, and the hedge, which we would consider to form uh, the boundary of St. Melian Village. Just moving further around into the site, you can see the access um, at the top of the site uh, and then dwellings which form part of the village. And then just moving around further um, at the bottom of the site, you looking back up towards the access. And this is just a couple of photos from a neighbouring property. Uh, there has been an objection from uh, the property fairways. Uh, this is just to show you the relationship from the neighbouring properties to the application site, which would be located behind uh, the hedge on the left of the shop. So again, the application site is just behind this hedge here. So this site is considered to be on land outside of the settlement of St Melian and instead would read as development in the open countryside. The proposal would create another site for rounding off and would lead to an erosion of the rural context. It's considered therefore contrary to policy three of the Cornwall local plan and the limited benefits of the scheme do not outweigh the harm identified. As such, officers are recommending the application be refused for the reasons set out on screen. That's all, thank you, Chairman. Thanks very much, George. Um, our first speaker is Richard Holmes. Um, is Richard with us, Angela? Uh, yeah, I believe all the speakers are present, Chairman. Right. Good morning, Richard. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Richard. Can you speak to me? Hello, Richard. Um, yeah, he's just muted himself oh. by accident. Uh, Mr. Holmes, if you can hear me, you need to press star six on your telephone keypad. But yeah, he's back with us, Chairman. Hi, good morning, Richard. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, if you can keep yourself close to the phone when you're talking, all the better. But uh, yeah, you just, just say hello to me again so we can hear you. Hello, hi, this is um, Richard Holmes and right. um, I'm the owner of uh, Fairway, one of the two properties. Right. Okay, um, most you... Yeah. OK, let me explain to you the rules. Um, yeah. You're alongside the golf course. You know how much importance is in rules of golf. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, Richard, um, you've got three minutes now to put your case to us. We'll yes. give you a 30 second warning before the end of it. So when you're ready, yeah. away you go. But please hang on for any questions at the end, please. Of course. Yeah. OK, just let me know when to go. Right, I'm starting. OK. Yeah, away you go. Right. OK, so... Um, just to give a little bit of background, obviously the lead applicants um, in this case um, previously brought a planning and principal application um, in the autumn of last year, which he subsequently withdrew. That re related to the whole of the paddock of which the current application site forms part. At the time he withdrew that planning and principle, I sought to engage with the lead applicant and we discussed the possible possible locations for dwellings um, that might be least offensive or most satisfactory from our point of view. And I, I suggested that the far northern or northwestern corner of the field, the paddock, um, at the most distant point from our boundary might be a satisfactory place to locate a couple of dwellings. Obviously, this was entirely off the record, but I hoped that we were reaching an understanding and that we, he might be, might be willing to actually discuss in detail before he submitted any further application. Nevertheless, he went ahead and he made his application um, without consulting further um, and along the most offensive line, shall we say, as far as, our, as we're concerned, in, in, in an area most likely to have a detrimental effect on our amenity and privacy. Um, obviously, you've seen all of our, my objections and those of my neighbour at the Laurels. Um, Subsequently, when this matter was called in by, uh, on Councillor Flashman's request, I dropped a couple of emails to Councillor Flashman to invite him to carry out a site visit and see, see it from our side of the boundary. I received no answer to that, absolutely no answer, not even, nothing at all. So, I mean, I understand that Councillor Flashman won't be voting in this matter, but I, I feel as though he, his support has been prejudged and he's not taken into account our considerations or our concerns at all. 
Anyway, finally, I'd just like to go back and say I fully agree with um, the case officer's views in relation to policy. This is contrary to policy. Um, ultimately, there is no public benefit to the application whatsoever, no special circumstances, and it's a case of you, the, the committee, having to balance the private interests of the applicant with the private interests of um, the Laurel and, the, and us in Fairway. So, as we would say, it's development in open countryside, it's outside what is clearly the settlement boundary formed by the Cornish Hedge. It doesn't comply with the rounding off regulations or the Chief Planning Officer's guidance on, on that. So, we just say you have to, you have to reject this. That, that, we, that, that's our view. Thank you. Good timing there, spot on. Um, just for the just for the information of members of the committee, Mr. Holmes, whereabouts um, do you actually reside in connection with this application? Okay, um, the property our property is Fairway, um, which is um, yes, we got it. Yes, we, we got it. Yes, it's just yeah. been highlighted um, uh, on on the map for us. Thank so you, that, that's okay. That's fine. Um, in that case. Uh, thank you very much. If you hold a moment, are there any questions for clarification, please? And I can see Jim, one hundred. Sorry, Jim, I would like to ask a question in a minute, please, Chairman. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, somebody's hand is up there, Chair, uh, uh, Vice Chair, but it's underneath my name again. I don't know why that's happening, Chairman. I can't see a hand raised right. here. In that case, I'll ignore it. Jim, you're our first up then. Yeah, um, I'd like to apologise to the, um, the speaker. I've had no internet until about a week or 10 days ago when I actually bought a new phone and if Cornwall Council have been able to make contact with me now and uh, I, have, I have no awareness. I've missed a couple of meetings at the St. Million Parish Council and uh, unfortunately... Yeah, this uh, is for clarification, Jim. It's, it's a yeah, clarification uh, question, mate. Yeah, um, from, so, your, from your uh, property... Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've actually been in the um, uh, site quite recently to have a site visit and um, there are quite high trees or bushes between you and the application site. Um, what is your concern about um, overlooking? Okay, um, I, in terms of high trees, I think you're probably referring to the trees that are nearest to the gate, which um, actually that's the boundary with the laurels. Where our property is situated behind the laurels, and yeah. Um, yeah. there are no there are no high trees between us and the application site whatsoever. It's entirely yeah. entirely formed by the Cornish hedge, which does need cutting back a little bit. But is I not. think I think we're, de we're determining in the trees, Mr. Holmes. Um, so you, you've answered that question. The trees. Uh, Jim asked about you answered that one haven't you absolutely fine thank you any other questions for clarification purposes please I can't see any hands raised Jim. no in that case thank you very much Mr Holmes you can continue watching our live stream okay thank you for attending thank you very uh, much this next speaker is councillor uh Bridie Kent are you there Bridie good morning I am councillor. Nice, to, nice to meet you. Good day to you. Uh, you've got three minutes to um, to outline your details. We'll give you a call 30 seconds before uh, to make you aware of where you are time wise. And then if you can hold at the end for any questions that may be forthcoming. So when you're ready, away you go. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you very much. So I'm speaking to you today on behalf of St. Mellian Parish Council with regard to the uh, item 4.3. As you can see in your papers, this planning application was discussed at the meeting earlier this year. One council has declared a conflict of interest and played no part in discussions. Two voted in favour of supporting the application, two voted against. There's only six of us on the parish council, so I have the casting vote and the application was unsupported. The primary reasons for this decision were that this application did not constitute rounding off that the site is a greenfield site and that there's never been any building on this land. We were sympathetic of the desire for housing by two of the applicants, Mr Hammond's senior sons, one of whom works at Babcock in Plymouth, the other has recently joined the military. And quite rightly, Mr Hammond is proud of them and wants to help them to get onto the property ladder. 
We're also cognizant to the fact that since before, just before Christmas, Mr. Hammond has been living in a caravan on the site because he, um, since he sold his house on Dunstan Lane in St. Melian Park. However, as with every application, the focus was on the application as presented to ensure our objectivity. And we did not agree that the development should be supported, given that the lack of alignment with the rounding off criteria. A previous application for planning and principle for five houses on the same site was, was withdrawn after being advised that this site might only be considered a rural exception site for affordable housing. This current application makes no mention of this type of housing. The location is beyond the outer natural boundary of the village with quite poor visibility for access to the field. The proposed site is also located quite close to the adjacent housing. There has been a mix of support and objection for this development by people who live in the village, including support by the resident opposite. However, we respectfully draw to your attention again the criteria for rounding off, which we believe does not apply to this Greenfield site. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brody. If you'd like to hold for the moment, are there any questions or clarification of the speaker, please? Um, Jim here, I'd like to ask a question, please. Clarification, Jim. Yep. Um, you have a, a housing list. Um, I believe there are two names on that. Are these two names the two people that are actually applying for these uh, sites at the moment? Mr Chairman, you can't ha have that answered. No, I was going to say, I don't, Jim, I've told you this is a clarification of what the speaker has said. OK, that's fine. That's a naughty question there, Jim. Bridie, sorry about that. Um, are that's there any fine. questions? Any questions for clarification purposes? Thank you, Councillor Holly, by the way. Any questions for clarification of the speaker, please? No? It's Angela, Chairman. I can see Councillor Parsons has got his hand raised. Ah, Adrian, away you go then. Thank you, Angela. Thanks, Chairman. Hello, Councillor. Um, just for clarification, please, do uh, St Melian Parish currently have uh, an active neighbourhood development plan? No, I'm afraid please. we don't, Councillor. You don't have one? No. Are there any plans to have a neighbourhood development plan in the future or there's nothing in progress at the moment? No, we, we pl the plans are in the plans are in the early, early stages. We, we tried to get one up and running beforehand about 2014, but it wasn't supported in the village. So we're trying again now. Well, thank you. And if I could ask one further question, uh, I recall last month um, you came and spoke on behalf of St Melian Parish Council with regards to an application, a quite a comprehensive application at the golf club. Yeah. Um, asking for, for numerous properties, um, holiday lets and various other uh, establishments that would possibly fit in with the business um, in open countryside, which the parish council were in support of. Um, just, just to help me understand a little bit further, why were you in support of such a large application then, yet what now seems like a very modest application that's abutting the village of St Mally and the parish council are objecting to. The um, reason for supporting the um, previous application by the, um, the um, St Mally estate was because of the, the, the existing planning permission there already for uh, 240 holiday homes and we believe that um, this the, the plans that have been put in place were an improvement on those and so and um, and with regard to the this particular application we went back to the rounding off um criteria and it's in open countryside and it doesn't constitute rounding off as far as we were um concerned well thank you okay uh, could i just ask one further question chairman um yes certainly this is clarification yeah yeah it is this plot is abutting the golf course and it looked like from the uh, overhead map that we're looking at there's only a small um, almost sheep netting style fence separating this plot from the golf course was was this plot of land once part of the golf course as far as i'm aware it's never been part of the golf course it was it was um, land that was sold by the bonds years ago so it's never been part of the golf course Right, thank you. I would have thought from its layout, uh, Councillor Parsons, also that it doesn't look as though it's part of a golf course because 
it would have to be a wayward golfer to end up up in that co- little corner of the field. But um, that's only me speaking as a golfer. But uh, any other questions of clarification? I can't see any there. No. Brian, thank you very much for attending. And by all means, watch it the remainder on live stream if you wish. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is um, Mark Andrews. Good morning to you, Mark. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning. I mean, you clearly know the rules in three minutes, 30 second warning on this. So I'll uh, I'll let you go away as soon as you wish. Thank you. Dear Chairman, Vice Chair and members of the Planning Committee, my name is Mark Andrews. I'm a planning consultant to Mr. Hammond and his two sons. Mr. Hammond is a resident of a parish and is seeking to provide his sons with two self-build plots to build their own homes using their own skills and local contractors. Cornwall Council positively encouraged self-builds and records a need in St Mayan Parish which this proposal can help to fill. The application site comprises land formerly part of the ownership of St Mayan Golf Course and is not agricultural land. The site is well related to the village and has an existing bit to access onto Church Lane. By reference to the location plan shown on your agendas, it's evident that the northwestern edge of the village has a jagged edge, with the dwellings on the north side of Church Lane extending significantly beyond those on the south side of the lane. My client's proposal will even up the pattern of development and will bring a symmetry to this edge of the village, just as policy three of the Cornwall Local Plan requires. It is a rounding off development. There's no doubt that as the policy is set out on page 25 of the Cornwall Local Plan, this policy this proposal complies. My client informs me that he was also, and this was also the view of the former head of development management and the formal development manager for Cornwall, both of whom had visited the site before coming to this view. The application site is substantially enclosed on three sides by the road and number seven and eight church parks to the north, the dwellings known as the Laurels and Fairway to the east, and a substantial Cornish hedge to its southern end. Again, this complies with the guidance in the Cornwall Local Plan. The guidance on page 24 of the Cornwall Local Plan is somewhat ambiguous as to whether it seeks the western edge of the application site to be defined by a pre-existing physical feature or proposed feature as part of the intended development. Whichever interpretation you wish to adopt, the intention is to avoid the creation of a further site for rounding off development beyond that currently proposed. In this regard, my clients have prepared to construct a traditionally built and top planted Cornish hedge along the western boundary to provide you with a physical barrier to further growth. If members consider it to be essential, my clients are prepared to accept a pre commencement condition so that the Cornish hedge has to be built before any other development. 30 seconds happens. left. This is an outline application with all matters reserved. The position of design of the two houses, including the placement of windows, are all subject to your later approval. The proposed plots of a size and orientation to adequately accommodate two dwellings without detriment to the amenities of the immediate neighbours. The proposals will provide some much needed local housing opportunities for the village and I commend this proposal to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, any questions of the speaker for clarification purposes, please? Councillor Parsons, Chairman. Adrian, Councillor Parsons. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, hello, Mr. Andrews. Um, Mr. Morning. Andrews, I did swing in around St. Melian and have a look at the site in question a few days ago, just just out of interest. I thought it might help me understand things a little better. Um, I think you've, in a way, you've somewhat answered the question, but it was one which I kind of was predetermined with and had in my mind before you spoke. You, you talk of the symmetry with regards to the housing that are currently there, with which is why you've gone with the site plan you have. But when I looked at it, it to me, it kind of felt that it would have perhaps sat better if the two, if you went for two along the road frontage, um, almost looking toward obviously looking towards the road and the houses which are the opposite side of the road what, what was there any reason other than symmetry and perhaps creating a, a new natural boundary why you went for this layout 
Um, we went for this particular layout because it's immediately adjoining the village and it, it is creating that symmetry, which is so mark so much part of policy three to justify itself. Um, I, I acknowledge what you're saying. There is potential to look at a road frontage development because the longer you look at this site and think about this site, the real boundary is, is really that with the golf course. That's the immovable object that will stop any further for the growth. Um, so I think there is mileage in what you say, but for us, we're looking to tie this type of village where it can sit there happily. And we were looking to tie in and to extend um, the Cornish hedge to the northeast and run that through and continue that through to finish off the boundary again. Okay. Yes, okay. Can I ask one further que question, Chairman, please? Yeah. Do you have any historic records of usages of this field? Because when I, I don't really consider this to be an agricultural field, but um, I don't know what the u historic use was or what classification there has been, if any, put on it, please. Well, I don't regard it to be agricultural land as it stands at the moment, nor has it been for probably about six years. It was owned by St Melian Golf Course. And my understanding is that this, this area of ground was used in association with the golf course and for parking during the tournaments. So it's before St Melian's ownership that it was, it would have been um, agricultural land, but it, it, it certainly isn't that now and is never going to be again. Thank you. OK, no other questions for clarification on my list. So thank you very much for attending, Mark. Obviously, you will be watching it on live stream. Thank you, Councillor Backers. Thank you. Um, we now move to the divisional member, Councillor Flashman. Jim, you have five minutes, at which time I'll be looking for you to wind down. Yeah, I'm sorry I asked an inappropriate question because I uh, obviously disagree. You're in your five yes. minutes already, Jim. <laughs> oh yes, um, <laughs> The earlier the earlier application of the golf club did um, uh, encompass this piece of land, but uh, when they came to sell it, uh, they couldn't come up with enough money, so they ended up keeping off some part of the land, possibly hoping for development. When the club was, uh, uh, the, the course was originally built, they removed all the topsoil from this field and all the houses that are built from there down to the opposite side of the church, this was all part of one field. So there is no natural boundary. The only natural boundary is the edge of the developed site of the golf club. Now on the south side of this site is a stone built hedge which proves that the stone build hedge runs right down to uh, the back of the um, uh, Glebe field. Um, I would like to support this application mainly because, as I mentioned before, which I shouldn't have done at the time, was the two people that are actually applying to build there are two young men that want to live in the village um, although they've lived with their father down at Dunstan Lane for a while on and off, but I feel that they deserve somewhere to build. And because they will be building South Build, those houses will become affordable. Um, and hopefully, because of demise in the numbers on the school, they hopefully, in time to come, will help the numbers in the school if and when they produce a family. Um, I think that the um, site has been described as a car park. It's been used for benching and hedging events, and it's also recently been used for the music festival that was held in the school field as uh, overspill car parking. Um, I would like to see the whole of the, the site develop with landscape gardening so that both properties would take up the whole of the site and they could landscape it down to the golf club boundary 
and that would enhance the area from uh, both from the view from the golf club uh, and uh, from the aesthetic view from uh, surrounding areas that obviously look on to the site. Uh, I was just trying to answer a couple of questions um, that the planning officer has put up here. Um, controversy, it was noted that the golf club physically restricts further development in the area. I would agree to the change um, into affordable housing. It's an affordable south build. Um, I ain't got the glasses on, excuse me. Sorry about the delay. Uh, there's been no um, complaints from the AOMB, either the Tamer Valley or the Cormo AOMB. Um, to bring two people uh, with families to that area would be obviously a plus, as most of the village now are in um, senior uh, age. That is mainly why the school is obviously uh, declining in population. Um, and I feel that the uh, both properties can be built to meet the um, need for uh, houses that have extra uh, meet the climate change, uh, which solar and renewables, water harvesting, and I think that that ought to be part of the um, detailed plan when it comes to the uh, detailed planning, if the planning committee is going to support this application. Um, there are two houses on the north side which are- That's five minutes, Chairman. Uh, yeah, five's up, Jim. I'll give you a couple of seconds to finish off because I, uh, I think you're yeah, I'm, dragging yourself. I'm nearly, I'm nearly there at the moment. Um, there are substantial trees on the dividing fence, and there are quite high bushes between the two houses next door. If it means keeping these houses off a few more feet from the boundary, I think that the applicant would put that in on his detail. So. Um, there are two houses on the north side, which Jim, I'm going to have to wind you up. I'm I'm sorry, you 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 know you're dragging on there. We're coming up to five and a half minutes. Yeah, and there are two but two houses on the eastern boundary. So uh, I must go with the um, um, plan or with the officer that has actually brought the application to. That I do not agree with his judgment, and I think this is definitely a rounding off. Thank you. Right. Sorry. Okay. Fine. He said, I lost my glasses just now. Thank you. OK. Um, right. In that case, if there's no questions for Councillor Flash, when we move on to questions of the officer. Are there any questions of the planning officer, please? None showing up? No? Uh, Chairman, yes. Uh, Neil Burden, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Good. Neil. Can I just say that reading the whole agenda, I just wondered how consistent our officers are. Tell about the members. And I just think uh, it's obvious that planning is something. Question, this is questions. Are you putting a question oh, to the right. planning officer? <laughs> do, the, do our officers feel that uh, the recommendations of the whole agenda are, 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 will hold up against any uh, appeal? Chairman, can I can I answer that? It's Davina. Um, yes, Davina, by all means. Yes, Neil. I, I think the recommendations are consistent. As you, as the committee will know, each case must be considered on its own merits, and there'll be di a different set of set of circumstances relating to the individual cases, um, and there may even be a different set of policy considerations relating to those individual cases, with neighbourhood plans. Um, in various parishes. So, so the recommendations that we put forward, yes, we are confident that we could defend those recommendations that appeal um, and, that, and that we're consistent in our application and understanding of policy. Okay, Neil. 
Uh, uh, thank you. Fine. Um, we have um, John Fitter next. Councillor Fitter. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, could I just ask um, the, the officer um, in um, paragraph 22 on page 56? Um, the land is laid to grass and has the appearance of a field, but is not currently in active use for agricultural purposes. But uh, as, a, as a member of the committee, um, am I to take the view, unless you can give me any other uh, conflicting evidence, that this is, to all intents and purposes, agricultural land? That's my first question. Yeah, thank you. Um... It's the, the land isn't in use for agricultural purposes previously and many years ago it may well have been an agricultural field. Um, that's not what the land is used for now. It's it's it pretty much unused. There's some movable structures on there um, and it's it's kind of appears to be used intermittently by the applicant. Um, but but at the moment it's not used agriculturally now. No, if I could interrupt you, Mr. Silas, sir. Um, it, the, the point is that at one time its designation was agricultural land and there's been no planned permission issued on this land to change that designation. It may well have mortified into something different, as you're saying, that the applicant's living on, etc. and so forth. But the fact remains, if we go back, the status, in my opinion, would be that it is agricultural land, even though it may not be used for agricultural purposes now. Yeah, I, th I think that assessment is is fair. They 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 may well be able to just use the land for agricultural purposes if that's what it's if that's what we consider its lawful use to be. Yeah, yeah. I I just want to clarify. So to finish off then, sir, that um in in, in essence then um as as one of the members of the committee, I'm entitled to believe um and your guidance will be helpful that this is then the open countryside. Yeah, that's that's our assessment. We don't consider the land to yep, be part of the system. Lovely. I just wanted to make sure I was on the right track. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, John. Councillor Parsons, Adrian. Thank you, Chairman. A, a councillor fitter has somewhat um, coerced the answer to my question out of George. But um, hello, George. George, um, on f when I first had the agenda come out, I had a quick read as I always do and I sort of had a little bit of doubt in my own mind about this site which is why I thought it would be beneficial for me just to go for a little drive around and have a look as I was in the area at the time. Um, if you're you know as a farmer I'm looking at that field and I kind of get where you're saying perhaps it's open countryside but but to say it's agricultural I would say is putting it out there. So, if when uh, at a time Common Council is looking for suitable sites to build houses to hit housing numbers, um, and this land is currently in use, it's open countryside, but it's not really, you know, no farmer in their right mind is going to take that on as a viable field. What what would you suggest would be a good usage of this field? If I may come in there, did, did, did George not say that he it was so many years ago they can only as, assume it was agricultural? Well, I mean, exactly. The, I mean, people, exactly. people, um, yeah, I mean, the but if it's not agricultural, what is it? is it, it's just open countryside. What if it's open countryside? It's either agricultural or it's not agricultural. Yeah. It's would not you, open would space. You like to outline, would space. you like to outline that again, George, please? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, you get uh, plots of land kind of dotted around the county where there's not really an identifiable use. Um, agricultural may may well be its last previously identifiable use. Um, but yeah, we, we can't offer much more than that without give, being given much more information on the history of the use of the land, but there doesn't appear to be much active use of it at all, really. Which, if I can okay. come back, Chairman, which in a way appears to be almost an enormous waste. I, yeah, I mean, it's it's a plot of land that's that's kind of wedged in between the golf course and, and the village. Um, yeah. I can I, I can see the point that you're trying to make. Um, yeah, we've just assessed it on its on its policies. Um, but I yeah, I can see what you're trying to say. 
Thank you, George. Sorry, sorry for being a bit random with. Um, Councillor Eddie Martin, would you like to come in? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, George, I, I'm just curious about this fence or hedge that is proposed down the middle. We had a case over here at uh, Warlegham where the affordable site was there. There was a fence down the middle and the next thing we had five or four open market dwellings on the other side of that fence in, in, in the other half of the field. Um, if a hedge was constructed, would that then extinguish that uh, option going forward? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 firstly, this is an outline application with all matters reserved. So details like landscaping haven't haven't been considered or, or really presented under this application. Um, I mean, that's something that, that perhaps members could consider as a condition, perhaps. Um, but there wouldn't be anything to prevent the applicant coming in further down the line to look at developing the rest of the site. That's not to say they will. Um, that might not be their intentions, but um, th th there would be a plot of land on this. The remainder of the plot of the land um, would still be unused. Um, you can maybe guess what would be coming further down the line, but but you you can't say for certain. That's that's up to the applicant. Um, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope that helps. OK, um, <laughs> well, well, I think I'm neither one side of the fence or the other chair. <laughs> but, so yes, yeah. Uh, um, thank, thank you, Fitter. <laughs> sorry, yeah. you finished, Marty, did you? Thank you, Martin. I have, thank you, Chairman. OK, yeah, thank, thank you. George. Uh, John. Yes, yeah. could I just come back to, to George again? Um, I, I'm concerned about the, 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 the sort of um, the, 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 the two answers that George has given to this this area and it's really it's not just the site because we're, we're tracking up to the boundary of the golf course i i i think that I, I i believe that personally as a member i'm entitled to believe that unless there is been any official change in the designation of what this land was be it 20 years ago it has to be what it was if it was born as agricultural land and there's been no physical planning change to it just because it hasn't been used surely if, if we go down that road we could say <clears throat> you, people could put paddocks aside for 20 years and say well it's not being used so it's no longer agricultural land but just because it's not so i think that uh, I, I would like george to consider uh, to say that surely the previous status of the land must be what it is now unless there has been some active development on it Sure. Yeah, I mean, in, in, unless there's been a, a formal change of use of the land or an unauthorised change of use of the land, then um, its historic use would, would generally remain. I mean, I don't think we need to get too hung up on the exact use of the land. In our view, it's not previously developed land, which is, as you all know, an important consideration when we're considering <laughs> applications for housing development with regards to policy three. Um, I think really what's more important is to consider um, if we accept it and it's not previously developed land is to consider whether it's within the settlement or outside of it. I think it's we're comfortable with its use of land is not developed um, with regards to policy three. Um, I don't think we need to get too hung up on the exact use of the land and its and its history as well. No, it just to confirm, just to come back to finish off what some other men, I, I get hung up on it because it's not just this plot. It's really the principle of whether there should be further development further up in the unused part of the field. And if we take the view that we don't get hung up on the fact that this is agricultural land, then that will make it easier should the applicant be so minded, and I'm not saying it is, but to push further development up the field. So um, you, you cannot, obviously, you, you have inner difficulties, so members will have to make up their own mind, to my mind, you know, if it's if it's a cow and got four legs and move like a cow, it's a cow. And I think this is quite frankly a field and formerly agricultural land. So thank you very much indeed for trying to help me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. I see no other questions there uh, of this of the planning officers. So in that case, we'll go into open debate. Who would like to start the open debate, please? My hands up, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Derek. How are you go, Derek? Uh, yeah, th thank you, Mr Chairman. I have to say, first of all, the interesting comment you made about the golf club, because 
I would have thought that way I've heard you slice the ball, that would be a very good planning objection in the first place, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Chairman, the planning officer made a comment at the beginning about the road is the access to the golf club. Can I just drop on that one, please? Because as chairman of the area planning committee further south, we supported the parish council um, when they objected to its use as an access to the golf club. It is not, and I'm saying this because this, this, this uh, broadcast may go a, a long way. It's access only for the immediate villages, it's not access to the golf club. Um, that's the first thing. Um, I know the site very well, Mr Chairman. Um, my wife and I frequently walk the permitted path just across the valley. We look across to this site I, and it's, it is a really exposed site. I don't know uh, why we've had all these arguments about agriculture. I mean, the, the site's perfect for a paddock for horses anyway. So it, as, as John says, you know, it's got two legs and quacks. Um, the arguments I thought by the agent were very weak, um, not being his fault, but because the whole arguments in favour are weak. I think we've been losing track of the essentials of this, Mr Chairman. It's abundantly clear that it's not rounding off, because rounding off has to be a piece of land that's um, substantially enclosed by the surrounding development. And also when its edge is clearly defined by some natural boundary like a deep ravine or a road or something like that and it shouldn't visibly extend into the countryside. Well, for goodness sake, Mr Chairman, it's really clear that it does all those three things. It's, um, it's, um, it's not enclosed, it's, there's no natural boundaries, and it's sticking out in the countryside. So I just can't see what all this argument about. The actual basics of policy are really clear on this, I would have thought. So I'm going to propose refusal, Mr Chairman, on the grounds of planning Thank office. you. Anyone wishing to second that? I'll second it, Mr Chairman. John Fitter. Thank you, John. Um, next one on my list, I think, is um, Councillor Parsons. Thank you, Chairman. I, you know, I find this quite an interesting application, really. Um, when, you know, I think this site's got a lot going for it. It's um, on the edge, adjoining, a rounding off site, almost in my interpretation of St Melian. St Melian, as we heard many people describe last month um, with regards to the application at the golf course to being a sustainable location as an hourly bus service to Plymouth or Launceston it, and, well, and then on to wherever you wish to go. It has all the facilities that St Melian has to offer. Um, we could see from the photos that it's not, it's definitely not an isolated site from whichever angle the photos were taken. We could see properties. Uh, this is a plot of land which it's unhelpful. There isn't a land classification, but as a farmer, I wouldn't say it's an agricultural field. Um, whether it's previously developed land, I can't say that either because we don't have a land classification or any other usage there. But I, from what I've heard and from what I suspect is this was a plot of land that was definitely used for ancillary reasons with regards to things that were happening on the golf course. Um, probably back when it was in its heyday, and it had the big tournaments there and it was used for overflow car arcing and I almost, I, don't, I did visit a couple of events in the time, but it's not clear. I almost think they used to have TV crews in there, but I might be wrong. But then obviously that was probably only for modest use on special occasions. Um, Councillor Holly mentioned, forgive me if I, I've got this wrong, but I think he said there are no natural boundaries. Well. We have natural boundaries all around the field and to which I would say it's only the southern boundary which is going into open countryside and there's no way that that boundary will be broken. To the um, western side we have the golf course which is quite obviously I would say previously developed land or got other uses for classification and to the north and the east we have houses. Um, the only thing what, which 
I'm a little uncomfortable about is the fact that it, the impact it has on the neighbours when we have a site of that size, we don't really need to be tucked up tight against them. But I feel that this is a um, an outline application, so I feel that that could be addressed later in the time. And when I think there were there was a question raised by Councillor Eddy, you know, if we stuck with this site, and you know, we have to judge what's in front of us now. Um, we can't really second guess what might come down the line, but if if we were to accept this, I don't see why if somebody came in with an application for the next part of the field that that would be accepted because it wouldn't have houses on two sides of the boundary. It would only be on one side of the boundary. So then there's no, that wouldn't be a round and off side, would it? Um, so I will be supporting this application. Um, but obviously a proposal has been put forward, so we'll we'll wait and see how that goes. But I would be happy to go against officer's recommendation on this one for those reasons. Thank you. Right. I don't see any other hands up at the moment, uh, in which case we will go to the vote, which has been a proposal by oh, Councillor yeah, Holly. Sorry, it's, it's Andrew. I can see Councillor Fitter's hand is up. Councillor Fitter, sorry. OK, John. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say a quick word. I, I've supported um, the officer and, and Councillor Holland because um, th th this I, I do believe in actual fact that we, we, we really need and I know it's a boring subject, but we need to establish really what we think this land is for, because if it is agricultural land or was agricultural land, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, presumably the golf course was probably 100 years ago agricultural land. But it's it's what this land is now. And it seems to be that we don't quite know the designation. And as such, I believe it's agricultural land. So I believe it is quite dangerous. I believe it's quite dangerous for us to sort of um, gaily then ignore what the officer has been saying about it being in the open countryside. Uh, and it's certainly not round and off. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I just think it's a dangerous step if we allow a development here. It's uh, unneighbourly, it's certainly unneighbourly, as um, Councillor Parson has said, it, it's an unneighbourly development because it's right up again. But I, I believe it, if, if we allow it, it will open up the rest of this paddock. It may be that nothing comes forward, but it will give the potential to open it up. And that was does concern me. And I believe it's been mentioned by the officer as a possible concern. So and that is my reason really for not supporting it. I, I believe, you know, we have to be quite oh, fair. Thank you. OK. Councillor Parsons, your hands up again. Is it anything new? Because I, I think we're going down a, a dark alley yeah, here. Nothing new, Chairman, but I think it's wrong for us to be second guessing what might come from further down all the we line. Do, all we do know is that once upon a time, the golf course wasn't there because I, I can remember playing on it when it was first built. It doesn't go back 100 years and most of those fields were potatoes in those days. That's all I can tell you from my local history of being a salt ash boy. But that's neither here nor there on this one. But I mean, unless there's something new to put to this argument, we do have a proposal and seconder for going to the vote. So is there anything else anyone wishes Thanks to add? the burden as his hand raised, Chairman. Sorry for coming yeah. in. I don't think you Yeah, ju just a quickie. Uh, I think... Uh, I I'm in favour of this site of all things. You may be surprised. I mean, worried about the neighbours. <laughs> neighbours look overlook each other. That's what it's all about in a village. So I don't think that you can give them um, that uh, priority that they mustn't have somebody next door. And I just think that it is. It, it's not rounding off, but this is a former car park and, and not uh, an agricultural field for, what, 40 years. So I just think it's... Um, it, 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 you know, the parish council, I don't understand. One minute they want to support masses of houses and the next minute they don't want to support somebody local with two. And I, I find that incredible. And uh, I, I, I'm I'm going to vote against the proposal. Right. Thank you. Right. When you say it was a car park, Neil, it was, a, it was a car park when special events were on, as were most of the fields surrounding St. Melian. 100,000 yeah, people used to attend in those days. Yeah, so I know. They, are, the they aren't worth much after, you know that, with the Rope yeah. Bridge site. They aren't okay. worth much after. But I'm going to take us to the vote now, because that's going to decide it one way or the other, isn't it? 
So unless anyone's got anything new they wish to put in that is of a positive nature, no, in that case, I'll pass across to you, Angela. The proposal is by Councillor Holly, seconded by Councillor Fitter, to go in line with recommendation for refusal. Across to you, Angela. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Burden. Against the proposal. Craker. For. Councillor Eddy. For the proposal. Councillor Fitter. For. Councillor Holly. For. Councillor Jordan. Against. Councillor Simmons. For. Councillor Mould. For. Councillor Pasco. Against. Councillor Pugh. For. Councillor Tamlin. Against. Councillor Parsons. Against. Councillor Batters. For. Okay, I'll just count that for a moment. Eight, five. Um, the motion for refusal has been carried by eight votes in favour, five against, and no abstentions. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have to leave the meeting now. Sorry. Yeah, OK, Neil. Thank Good you. Um, Councillor Parsons, I think looking at the time, it might be advisable if you took over this case, this, this one, because I don't think it's going to be finished in time for me to go. OK, so that's if fine. If that's OK with you. Yeah. Do, would you suggest do people want to take a few minutes for lunch or do they do you think we're going to crack um, on now? How's, how's uh, everyone feel about it? Because it's got to be at least at least an hour and a half, I should have thought more. Chairman, it's Angela from Democratic uh, Services. Uh, Can I just um, come in a moment? We do have a second live stream set up for two, so it might be worth um, carrying on for the moment until about half one and then having a half an hour break and restarting at two o'clock. So you're talking about having a, a mid a, a, a mid-debate break? Yes. Right. Well, in that case, Adrian, you best start to chair it, if you like. OK. I mean, and I, I mean, I can step to one side now, because otherwise it might be a bit pointless having two chairmen. And I won't be here to vote on it anyway. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Sorry to catch you unawares. No, you're OK. I'll just get my info together. I was... Right, but it's a bit disjointed if I disappear and then you've got yeah, two chairs. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. OK, next item on the agenda is... Not that one, move on. Outline application for one dwelling with all matters except access, access layout, scale, design, reserved for Netley, House Harrow Barrow planning application PA 20 slash 06336. Um, if we can hand over to the case officer, please. I think it's George again for this one. Yeah, me again. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, George. Yep, yeah, so PA 20 forward slash 06336 at Netley House outline application for one dwelling. So the key issues for this application is whether or not this is a suitable location for open market housing with regards to the development plan policies, landscape impact, highway impacts, impact on public right of way, neighbour impacts and impact on the World Heritage Site. So the application site is located on the western edge of Harrow Barrow and the site is within a World Heritage Site. The site itself form part, forms part of the garden for Netley House um, with the more rural open countryside immediately west of the site and the main built form of Harrow Barrow to the south and the east. To the south of the site you can see there is a unadopted private track which is also a public right of way. So you can see the area, um, semi-rural and the site itself is bounded by mature trees on the western and northern boundaries. The proposal seeks consent for one dwelling located centrally within the plot with access from the track to the south. The dwelling is a two-storey property, four bedrooms with attached garage. 
And then just moving on to the photos. Um, so this is taken from um, the southern end of the site, looking into the site. So it incorporate mostly the rear um, part of the garden, which you can see. Netley House, the host property, is on the right hand side of the shot. So you can see that the land is used uh, domestically and you'll also note the mature trees on the northern boundary and western boundaries, which you can see. And again, just looking up to the top of the site, so looking northwards and you'll note uh, neighbouring properties located to the east of the site. And then just looking back down uh, the application site, so Netley House, the host property, uh, you can just see its conservatory there on the left and then the proposed access and driveway um, would just be in this uh, gap down here sort of in the, in the darkness that you can't quite see uh, and you'll also note some other neighbouring properties uh, the gable roof there is located on the opposite side of the um, the unadopted track which is also a public right away and this is netley house uh, the host property so this is just the access uh, looking from the direction of the site towards uh, the public highway. So you've got a neighbouring property on the right hand side there. Um, and yeah, the track just leads down to the main highway. Um, this photo just taken a bit further on. Uh, you can see the main highway there at the end of the end of the track. And this is just uh, kind of turned 180 degrees. So basically looking back towards the application site. The application site would be located uh, on the right hand side of this image. Um, the, the existing access point is just slightly further up beyond um, the extent of the image. And this is just the uh, main junction from the track to the main highway. So the application site is garden land, which forms part of the settlement of Harrowbarrow. It is well related to the settlement and consistent with the pattern of development, therefore representing rounding off in accordance with policy three of the Cornwall local plan. Matters relating to design, neighbour impacts, highways, the World Heritage Site, public rights of ways, trees and ecology are all found to be acceptable. Our recommendation to use that the application be approved with conditions which are set out in the report. Thank you. Right, thank you, George. Uh, if we could move on to our first speaker, Angela, do we have Councillor Terence Letchford from Colstock PC available? Please. Yes, uh, both speakers are here, Chairman. Right, thank you. Hello, can you hear me all right? This is Terry Hello, Letchford. Councillor Letchford. Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. That's yeah, great. Lovely. Welcome, thank you. welcome to uh, the meeting. You have yeah. three minutes and you'll have a 30 second warning near the end, OK? Uh, thank you very much, Ian. Thanks for your time. Thank um, you. Basically, uh, there's not really much that you haven't already said about the, the situation. The only thing what I would like to say is that the 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 what this local there's been eight people with negative uh, responses to this application who live locally, and most of them re relates to water issues down this lane, which is an unmade road. Well, you can call it what you like. It's a footpath, and. Uh, there's an awful lot of water that runs down this road and most of the residents there know this and it runs down the road and causes a lot of problems. Also, safety, I know the highways have come back with no no quotes on this or any problems, but if you walk up that road, which I've done several times, it's a very dangerous road. There's a bend just before you get to this this junction coming from uh, Cowstock Way and there's a bend also coming up if you're coming up from actually Arabarium where the post office is. And it's quite wide in use this road because of the post office being down there. And obviously it's a well used road. But I mean, I've walked it yesterday and even on a Sunday, it's quite a busy little road. That's that issue to do with the road. The other thing is that I've been led to believe by a, a local resident that there was a covenant placed on this land behind Netley House that no development should be placed on it. Now, um, I, I can't. I can't say that I'd, I've seen anything about this myself, but I've been led to believe that that is true. And in fact, the daughter of the people that, that owned the land that sold it to Netley House, which was Hayden Mangsford, it, their daughter actually told some, the person I spoke to about this. So that's just a, something for you to think about. 
um, that's all I've got to say on the matter, really. You, you can, you'd have your own thoughts on this, but my view is it's in the wrong place and it's a very dangerous access and they've not thought of anything to do with the road. They've said that they're going to cover it with asphalt or tarmac or something up to the drive, but there's such a lot of water that runs down that road, it won't last five minutes and it'll be washed away. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Right, thank you, Councillor Letchford. If you could just hold on a second, just in case there are any questions of clarification from any members. Do we have any questions? It appears we have no speakers. So thank you very much for your time. And if no, you so no, wish, you can watch this on the webcast. I will do. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Next speaker is Councillor Jim Flashman. Oh, no, Chairman, sorry. Um, we did have a speaker that was missed off of the original speakers list. Right, OK, and, Angela. And thanks. we've got that for the next two items as well, because they were... Right, so could I so have... I don't have the names the, who we have yeah. speaking. The next speaker is Mr Andrew Searle, who's speaking. Mr Andrew Searle. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, and I'll let you know for the next... Uh, next item because we have an extra right thank well. you thank don't you. have an updated list here right is mr Searle online yes can you hear me okay hello mr Searle. welcome to the meeting apologies for not having you listed to speak um no you have three minutes and you have a 30 second warning near the end okay thank you lovely thank you um, uh, yes, so uh, my wife and I have lived uh, in the uh, property in Netley House uh, for about 18 years um, and in an ideal world we would love to continue living in the village but we have to downsize as I approach retirement both for physical and financial reasons. Uh, the current garden is too big for the house and the proposed development leaves just the right amount of leisure space for the main house without uh, either property encroaching on the other. Uh, just listening to other discussions, I think it should be noted that Harabaro is undeniably a settlement with a post office shop, school and church. Uh, and the case officer considers the plots as rounding off in accordance with the Cornwall local plan. We are currently in the process of selling the house and the garden subject to approval today. We have interest in the main house from a family who want to stay in the village, having sold their home because they need something larger. We have also had interest in the development land from another fa family in the village wanting to move out of their parents' home and also a local family from Callington wanting to move to Harborough. Obviously, we, we would not be able to progress these inquiries until we have a decision today. This is not a case of making a quick buck by selling up to newcomers moving in from London. We are actively prioritising local families and indeed have turned down a higher offer for the house alone from a family moving into the area in favour of the local family. We can only afford to do this, however, if we have the income from the sale of the development land. I feel that approval of the application would not only allow my wife and I to secure our future, but also, more importantly, provide homes for two families who would enhance the life of the village. So I've got to say thank you. Thank you, Mr. So do we have any questions for the speaker, please? No hands raised. Thank you, Mr. So for your time. Lovely. Thank you very much, Tate. Bye. Take care, bye now. So, who else do we have to speak listed, Angela, please? It's um, just Councillor Flashman as the Electoral Division just member. Councillor Flashman, OK, thank you. Councillor Flashman, would you like to come in? You have five minutes and hopefully you'll wrap it up <laughs> pretty sharpish then. Um, this garden was uh, previous application went in several years ago and that was to try and keep someone a builder actually had done all the work in Harrowborough they wanted to keep him there because he was a, a restorator of um, historic buildings but unfortunately due to several complaints the site was turned down uh, the building line actually goes right up the middle of the site and it's probably between the main dwelling that's proposed there and the garage so the dwelling would actually be with inside the development line um, the lane in question belongs to my wife and she's in agreement providing that they have uh, good engineers retiring the entrance to the lane we could incorporate 
uh, an angled diversion of the water into the road drain, and that would improve the well-being of all the people in the village because the water does come out there. At the moment, it's a farm track to some 500 acres of land that runs opposite my farm. Um, the water doesn't all come out here. A lot of it goes back and goes down towards Well Brothers Wood. But um, um, if that road was in state, reinstated into the building plot, I have every confidence in the um, improvement to the village, and that would obviously prevent a lot of people from uh, having a lot of comment about the flooding that carries on down there. It's road drains block, as you know, and it does run right down past the post office. Um, highways have been there on a, a number of occasions, and because of the camber of the road, the water runs across the road instead of down the drain, and they said there wasn't a lot they could do about it unless someone was actually done in the mouth of the lane. The access point is good. Uh, agricultural vehicles come out there towing trailers. The only near accident we've had is someone coming up the village uh, with a Merlot tractor with a trailer on the back, and unfortunately he didn't put the trailer on exactly correctly. And it ran away backwards, but fortunately it hit one of the banks on the way down and stopped it within about 20 yards of the um, access point, rather than running straight back down into the village. Fortunately, there was nothing on it. Um, well, I would certainly support this, and how nice it is and invigorating for someone to actually tell us what they're doing. Um, this family has had some heartache since they've been living there. And I would certainly wouldn't like to go into it in detail, but um, they've been open and honest what they're going to do. And I'll really take my hats off to them for actually um, taking some less money and offering it to two local families. And uh, I'm got an awful lot to say, really. I think that it's an improvement to the area. And I think that Meadowside that lives in the lane would also appreciate the lane being fitted up. Um, there is an actual fact um, a sewage man all lid a little way in the lane, which they obviously have to respect when they're actually laying the road in. But if they have competent people doing the job, I've got every um, uh, um, approval of the site because I think that they will do a good job. They're very honest people, and I think that full support by me has been there all the time. Um, they did try for a couple more in there, but the planning officer advised them one would be sufficient. And they're quite happy to do that. So thank you very much for having my time. And if there's any questions, I would obviously answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Flashman. Um, it appears we have no questions for you. So if that's the case, um, if we can go back to George for any questions of the case officer. Do any members have any questions, please? Councillor Fitter, come in. Thank you. Um, George, um, uh, this Carl Stott has said um, uh, an emergent neighbourhood plan, which is at examination stage now. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so, you know, um, we, we must be able to give it some weight, uh, and because they they, um, uh, they say this will be um, in conflict with their emergent um, neighbourhood development plan. So the, 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 this settlement, it says proposed settlement boundaries set within the plan would be contrary to their neighbourhood plan. So, um, w w you know, what weight can we give this? Because it will be their intention and presumably um, I can't imagine that after, after examination that the policy um, won't be approved by Cornwall Council and then it goes to the vote. So I just wondered, you know, um, you, you've given it, have you given it any weight at all? Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Um, I, I, I think at the moment we would, the amount of weight that we would probably be giving the emerging Castock neighbour plan would be limited to increasing um is is what we're directed to to give neighborhood development plans at this stage of the process but that that's limited from a, a very very low base uh and what we know is that at examination the inspector has raised a few issues with the settlement boundaries 
um, and it sets out in the guidance if there are issues with certain aspects of, the, of um, a neighbourhood development plan as it's as it's being pushed towards um, adoption. Um, we'll have to assess how much weight we can give to it depending on certain issues and the settlement boundary as far as we're aware hasn't been um, absolutely um, finalised yet um, and they're actually reconsulting we believe on um, aspects of, of the settlement boundary so we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be seeking to rely on the, the the NDP at this stage just because there are unresolved issues still okay that, that, that's very helpful thank you very much indeed thank you for that thank you mr chairman thank you councillor fitter um doesn't look like we have any more questions for the case officer so if that's the case we'll um move into the open debate Chairman, it's um, Angela from Democratic Services. I know it is 25 past one. I don't know what the committee feels they want to do, if they want to stop in a minute or did they just want to finish the item? Well, I'm minded, Angela, that I'm hopeful we can get through this one as it's fresh in our minds, if you're okay with that and everybody else is. Yeah, that's yeah cool. absolutely. We're progressing quite yeah, carry well. On, with this one. Okay. Right, let's carry on. Right, so obviously we need to be th thorough. But if we can be to the point, um, we'll go into the open debate, please. Who would like to? Councillor Craker. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll be very brief. I, I hear what the parish council um, have said, and I understand their concerns, but I'm, I'm not satisfied that the um, there is sufficient planning policy to refuse this application. So um, I, I'm. I'm content with the report and that we approve uh, as set out in line with officer recommendation. Happy to make that proposal. Thank you. So just to clarify, Councillor, you're happy to propose that? Yes, that's right. Yeah, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Tamlin. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm happy to second Councillor Craker. Um, this is in a garden. Um, and so we all know this is previously developed land. Um, I think it's it, because of that. I think it's within the development boundary anyway, to be honest. So yeah, I'm just happy to second Councillor um, Craker. Councillor Redding. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I, I'm happy to support this application. I'm looking at the development boundary in the neighbourhood plan and it does seem to separate the garden from the house. Which, uh, which which looks a little strange, but um, irrespective of that, I'm happy to support this application, Chairman. Thank you. And um, Councillor Hawley. Mr Chairman, would you bear with me for a second? Would you kindly ask the planning officer, because of the application that came before where rounding off was refused, just to summarise for the parish council, who all the parish councillors attending have got to go back and report this, just to summarise why this rounding off is different point by point very quickly. Could you please? I'll do that for you, Councillor Hawley. Um, Thank you. Could we just have some, just for Councillor Hawley, can we have clarification moving forwards as it's looking like this will be accepted um, from either Davina or George, please? Yeah, I think I think the key issues and we don't want to compare applications too much, um, but but differences to probably point out between this one and the last one. Um, this current application is enclosed by um, long standing substantial boundary features. So you've got mature trees and I think probably most fundamentally uh, this land is garden land um, of a property which forms part of the urban context of the settlement, <coughs> whereas the previous application um was uh yeah open countryside land and not within the settlement thank you mr chairman and thank you thank you for that clarification i think it's important for the parish council thank you okay right as we have a proposer and a seconder in line with the officer's recommendation um i think we can proceed to the vote if um if everybody's happy uh could you take over, Angela, please? Yes, thank you. Councillor Craig. <laughs> Four. Eight. Sorry, did you say me? Eddie? Yeah, Eddie. Uh, Four. Eddie. Four. Thank you. Councillor Fitter. Four. Councillor Holly. Four. Councillor Jordan. 
Four. Councillor Simmons. Four. Councillor Mould. Four. Councillor Pasco. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. Councillor Tamlin. Four. Councillor Parsons. Four. Councillor Batters. Or has Councillor Batters left yet? Councillor Batters? I think he's left. He might have left. OK, I'll just count. Um, Chairman, I can confirm that that's um, been approved unanimously. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Um, right. That, that's carried. So we will now take a break before the next item. Um, are you suggesting, Angela, we come back at two o'clock? Yes, and um, for the benefit of any public listening, you'll need to um, use the second live stream link on the website in order to hear the proceedings. Thank you. Right, OK, OK, right. Hopefully everybody's heard that, so that's covered. Right, so we'll take a break, lunch break, and we'll come back for two. Thank you. <laughs>